trying to make a movie that would sell well in America, but then wanted to make a movie that was like super ambitious and original, and a super ambitious original movie would not sell well in America. Mm -hmm. So, a lot of academics were paid and nothing came out of it. Yeah, no, from all the things that I've read about him, James Cameron's a piece of shit. That doesn't surprise me. It's not just this, it's yeah. The demographic of people that I just assume is a piece of shit. Yep. Like, like he was probably friends with Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> Wouldn't have surprised me. <laughs> Are you guys, you guys aren't getting any more echo, right? Oh, shoot. I don't think so, no. They put the, the silica packet in a place that, in a packaging that made me think it was edible, so I cut it open. Kevin, are you, well, I'm glad you didn't eat the silica packet. Yeah. I mean, you can eat it. I mean, I, you can't, you shouldn't. Not that you, you can try. <laughs> but you could try, go ahead. <laughs> can you open up a webcam? Oh, it's the Silica Challenge of 2020. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to donate to your channel. Silica Challenge sounds like like where 2020's headed. In my in my defense, honestly, if all of humanity took the Silica Challenge, it could probably be best for the world. <laughs> in my defense, I Kevin, your cat's being horny. It's not my cat. He's your cat when he's not being horny. When he is being, he's gross. He's your cat when he's being horny. He's my cat all other time. Aileen, get off of him! Double gross. Aileen, you're not even good at it! That's not where his Aww. butt is! Aww. That's the center of his back! This is Ooh. the worst description <laughs> of uh, hentai I've ever heard. Aileen's <laughs> not good at being horny. Cat's Hello, psycho. friends. I'll God. cut a new hole. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> that dog was good at being horny. Tara was good at being horny, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm. Is everybody online? And they're recording us. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh. Um, just about, yeah. Cool. Um. All right, bitches. Would you believe that I actually already know what the pregame question is without having to roll? Because I have a special pregame question picked out for this game. Oh, wow. that's nice. <laughs> yeah, I know. I can believe that. Um. Okay. So I'm going to ask the pregame question. I'm also going to answer the pregame question for our two new characters after you guys place your answers. So the question is, the, the first part of the question is a big yawn. Um, the second part of the question is, um, does your, hmm, how do I word this? Can you describe a mentor that your character had that we have not heard about so far? <clears throat> Rude's mentor was this gigantic wrestler named Pacho. Mm -hmm. He taught him all the moves. Okay. <laughs> um, quick question. Was this... But was this after he had left um, the the Alpine community and was no longer training under his father? Yes. Okay. Did he leave the community to become an intergalactic pro wrestler? Uh, yes. Okay, obviously, for sure. That makes sense. Um. All right. Well, that's a good answer. <clears throat> I think uh, Blovin had some advice after his brother died and the the Krell takeover of his planet from somebody who's old and is now probably passed away. I'm thinking like a grandmother um, whose name I don't know yet. Um, and so she provided a lot of sort of wisdom and perspective that helped him make sense of what was going on during that time. Oh, okay. I like that. Um, did he learn any particular skills or anything from her? Um, that probably began his interest in sort of, um, 
not not controlling his own mind because that sounds a little weird to say but um and and just processing what's happening um and it's not uh not not letting his emotions run him into the same fate as his brother suffered um kind of like mindfulness yeah i like that We have a um, we have a character on the Gemini named Strom Furman, and I had to stare at him for a long time to remember who the fuck he was, and then I remembered, and I was skeezed out. He's the arms dealer. Yeah, yeah, he is. Okay. Whew. Um. So we have an answer for. Um, we have an answer for two people so far. Do we have any other volunteers? I'm still thinking. Yeah, okay. I think I, I kind of have a name. Well, I don't have a name for my character. Oh, um, yours is going to be interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking that the person who provided me the most, like, in mentorship is going to be one of the village elders that found me when I first made it to the planet that the group ended up taking me off of. The village elders of that village? Yeah, of the village where I was initially okay. found. Yeah. Okay. Um, how did he... Uh, how did he inspire growth in... Um, MSA. <clears throat> well, physically, they um, provided me with more um, understanding of the people that lived in that village in that area. Um, oh, MSA you, at that time. Sentence, when you started the sentence with physically, they provided. I assumed it was going to to end with a gun, oh. and I was enjoying <laughs> the mental image of somebody just like finding a robot walking in from uh out into the countryside and going hey little buddy here <laughs> Go yeah now. no 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 um i would say that came much later after i'm um, coming to understanding like what it means to be kind of like a vigilante in this place and like why mm -hmm. they would need one um no the village elder was just like yo you've been offline for some time let me just bring you up to speed and like me trying to wrap my head around like how long I'd been like logged off before then, before the elder had found me. I like this. Okay, so so you ended up on the planet, you were a like protector of the planet for some amount of time. You went offline, you came online again after presumably you had spent several periods here where you were just like offline intermittently. You come online the most recent time, meet this um, town elder. Um, would you say that this was uh, shortly before um, the events that took you off of the planet? Or would you say it's like hundreds of years before? I would say that I got to see at least one generation of, of people die out before I was taken off the planet. Great. I like that. It's a good answer. Yeah, okay. I think that works. Right. Um, um, so Roy doesn't have a mentor, so to speak, or anything like that, but he yeah. does have a handler. Um, okay. Yeah, the handler being, I can't fucking remember her name. It was the first person who I mentioned from Red Corp back in like one of our first Space Fair games. Um, I will have that for you in just a second. Okay. She was a doctor something or other. Mm -hmm. but yeah she was um she was roy's handler and i don't want to go too much into what that actually means but if you know the term then you can figure out what it implies her name was dr sydney she worked with dr klama dr klama dr klama was the handler so dr klama was the male doctor who was on the gemini oh that was the male dr. okay then it was dr sydney yeah dr sydney was the, yeah. the other doctor Dr. Sydney was the handler. Um, has anyone 
this aside, has anybody seen the series The Boys? I don't think so. Nope. Oh <laughs> shit! Check Everyone it out. should watch Check that. It out. There's a there's a handler type character and her superhero. I don't. The relationship is not like that to anybody who has seen that show. Okay, I was about but, to say. I'm like, man, you got some real no, 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 no. good stuff. I am not on. fucking Homelander. No. No, 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 no. Sure. <laughs> Wait, actually, <laughs> the more I think about it, uh, the there's boys. a there's a show. It's like a grim, dark uh, superhero show. It's called The Boys. It's on Amazon Prime. It's really wow. fucking good. Um, it's basically about what if superheroes were all just privileged assholes and it took normal people to fuck them over because fuck them yeah. and their corporate assholes. Yeah, it's Lindsay, really good. Lindsay watched that show. Um, Who watched it? Lindsay, you said? Yeah, Lindsay did. I haven't caught much of it. It's really good. Season two is about to come out. I highly recommend it. I just binged the whole thing. Right. But uh, yeah, there's a handler character in that and the relationship that my character has with their handler is nothing like that, but her role as a handler got me thinking about how Roy and the doctor could interact. Okay, cool. Um, all right, good answers so far. Um, we have not heard from Emil. We have not heard from Avalon. <laughs> Uh, I guess I'll go. Um, sure. Yeah. I think that there was like probably honestly I have a hard time answering this question because uh, I there would certainly be a mentor on the planet that I came from. Sure. Um, that was sort of like there uh, at the moment that like uh, Amil immigrated there. Mm -hmm. um, but like I can't think of it right now. I mean, you don't need to have a name. Yeah. Um, there was just, like, the first person that, like, took me in there. I'm assuming, like, I immigrated and, like, I ended up in some, like, housing situation where one of my neighbors was, like, you know, helping me acclimate to the planet. I like that. So, um, do you think this is... So... Do you think that Emil was already a decent mechanic by the time he got to that, uh, to the planet? And, um, this person was more of a, um, he helped him grow on a personal level? Yeah. Or do you think he was, yeah. That. Okay. Because I think so that's like, more I, interesting I would, than a literal teacher. Yeah, yeah, like, I worked as a mechanic in the Terran Empire before. Right. And was, like, exposed to, um, but it was just, like, a new... Like, because the planet that I'm from is not like any other planet in the Terran Empire, so mm -hmm. it was an adjustment. That's really cool. Yeah. I like that. And Ace, it's all you. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure if this counts as a full answer because I feel like I might have mentioned her very briefly, so the party may have some, like, knowledge about her, but, uh, Avalon had a mentor that basically like it was it was supposed to start as a I'm just here to teach you the ropes in like controlling your warp abilities and getting to feel those out but she basically came to meet Starfire after the destruction of her planet so her first meeting with her mentor like she's in this awful place because she's just gotten her legs blown off she still has no idea where Nox is like and she's just in a really bad place because it's just like everything I've known is gone now. Like it's a completely fresh slate. I'm out in space with these new powers I don't understand yet. So Starfire ended up mentoring Avalon in those ways, but it also like, I think it, it led to a lot of personal growth just because like Avalon still has some depressive tendencies, but she's not completely wrapped up in herself anymore. Like. At that point in time, when she first met Starfire, she was probably in a place of, I don't really care if I live or die. And right. she's at least progressed past that now. And she's she she feels good about what she's doing to help the children of the warp. And she feels good about her own personal progress, but it's still yes. like a ways to go. Hey, that that is a, a solid gold thing you just skipped over there. Um, do you think that her finding a new purpose a new um, goal to work towards, something to care about, was one of the the most important part of her um, moving on and um, 
you know, kind of getting control of her own life back. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because I'd like to think that if she didn't get that mentorship and she didn't end up, like, finding something else to care, Avalyn is 100% the personality that would have just led a suicide mission back to her own planet to try and take something back. But it probably wouldn't have went well since it was really only her. Okay, that's awesome. Um, so... So I'm liking that. So I'm going to answer for... Malati and Anwar. Just to double check, we've done every character in the party right now. Um, Ruta, Emil, Avalyn, Nate, Love, and Roy. Okay, we did everyone. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, and I think the context for this is going to be, um, you guys have, you got your Jeep, you got all the parts, everything that you needed to prep, um, and you're in your ship, your, um, the Gemini as well as Caden's ship, are flying down to um they're they're flying towards the the Alfin um world ship which is named the Fatima Room. Um but it has actually just been kind of drifting at a like coasting speed through space ever since this um thing happened like a week ago. Um so it's actually no longer in the star system it's a bit out there so you guys are going to need a day or two of travel to reach it because you've got to catch up with it you know um so during that time i think it's it's a very awkward time for anwar and malati because malati especially is incredibly anxious right now and very much just like wants to be doing something but there's really nothing she can do right now except um just wait until you get there. So she's probably doing a lot of like anxious training and stuff like that. Um, and maybe over dinner, one of these days, um, you guys all get talking about past experiences and that's how the conversation of everybody's mentors comes up. And um, as everybody's going around about mentors, um, Malati is going to to volunteer hers. So Malati was actually trained by a a guy named Tuan. And um, Ruda, even though we've established that Ruda is an absolute dumbass who doesn't know any kind of elfin lore because he didn't pay any attention in history class, <laughs> even you recognize this guy's name. Um, because oh. Tuan is a... Um, He's a famous Aelfin hero kind of character. Um, it's really bad because I have an exact mental image of him from a, a game I played as a kid that I'm like inspiring him that he's based on. But it's a game that I literally don't think any other human being played. So I can't use it as a book. No, um, I'd love to hear what was the game. Yeah, same. Um, the game was the game was Asheron's Call, and the character is the titular Asheron. Um, and it was just a an old MMO that I could talk about for hours because I think <laughs> it was a brilliant game. And MMOs ever since have been spiraling out of control and losing some of the best simulationist aspects that it uh, developed. But ignoring that. Um, so, so Tuan was a famous, um, he was a famous singer, which is the Aelfin word for somebody who is kind of like the equivalent of an Aelfin engineer. So remember we talked about Aelfins have living technology. So instead of like mechanical guns, they would go to a garden and they actually um, sing a special kind of song to their, um, to these like special plants. And the song that they sing affects what is grown out of them. And they use that um, to grow the like biomechanical weapons and tools and systems and stuff like that that they use as a society. So, um, so singers is a very broad category, but it's, um, it's a singer is kind of like saying, um, scientists in, in human, like it means a lot of different things, but, um, 
Chuan is famous for, among other things, being in the first generation of people to um, to build world ships, allegedly. So he he is so old that he was around um, before the Aelfin were even living in world ships, which would make him wow. probably millions of years old. That's um, crazy. Yeah. So. Um, uh, and he he trained, he, he had lots of uh, students that he's taken on over his lifetime, but he trained Malati um, as a, um, an Aelfin, like, um, paladin, kind of a similar situation to uh, Rudo's, except she's trained in more of the, the mystical um, psionic arts. And, okay. um, and she is... She was kind of being groomed to be his, like, uh, the, like being groomed to be a, a queen or some kind of government official by him. Um, and uh, Tuan had a twin brother named Dion, um, and uh, Anwar was actually trained under Dion, who was, um, while Tuan was always the, the leader and the person who was, like, pushing things forward with new innovations and new techniques and stuff like that. Dion was a, um, he was somebody who got things done. So he, he would be like leading war parties and, um, you know, uh, being involved in police forces and stuff like that. He was more of a hands-on person. Um, uh, tragically, Dion actually uh, went missing uh, off in a war campaign about, um, let's say, about 10 years ago. So he went MIA. And um, and even you know about this, Ruda, because this was like a big deal. Because remember, this guy is millions of years old. Um, he was one of the, the most famous living... Uh, Ailfin, and he um, went missing and has not been seen since. So, uh, Maladi was re was trained by Tuan, and Anwar was trained by Dion. And um, Anwar actually, I think, I think it's probably not Anwar who says that. It's probably Maladi who calls him out that um, after Anwar lost his mentor. He kind of ended up, um, what's the word, uh, getting kind of directionless, and he became a little bit rowdy, and um, and he uh, established kind of a, a personality as a bad boy on the ship for a while before he decided that he just wasn't fitting in anymore and decided to leave. Um, so. That is their backstory. How did I do? Fantastic. Pretty good. good. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. Um, yeah, I like I like those two and I like their mentors. So I think that's, um, I think we can have a lot of fun with them in this uh, campaign. So then um, with that, I think that uh, you guys have successfully passed the time as you travel to um as you travel to the Fatimaru. Um I have drawn up a couple maps we're going to be using for this game and I have to um I have to transfer them from my phone to Roll20, so that's gonna take a minute. Why don't you guys talk about what things you're doing either literally or mentally to prepare yourselves for this mission? We're just inspiring, just inspiring with the wombat. Oh, I'm definitely like, because we're having a ship that's going to orbit outside of the Fati Maru when we get there, right? Yeah, and There's um, definitely Caden gonna... ship is going to be like, I imagine Caden ship is going to be basically tethered to it. Yeah, I'm definitely leaving like a little pinky on, on the ship. Fantastic. <laughs> um, notes to self. Actually, okay, I'm just going to paste this into, uh, no, because I might want to censor these maps. Okay, anyone else? 
Uh, I think Blovin, you said Anwar is anxious? Um, Malati is, is very anxious. Anwar is too cool and laid back to be anxious. He's I too think... chill, as the kids would say. I think Blovin is, <laughs> is taking a tour of duty going around to all the, the crew members who are um, seeming distressed or worried about this upcoming mission and just kind of consoling them and talking with them privately. So oh, I would that's... imagine that I'm doing that to Melody and perhaps others if there are oh. some. Um, At this point, we're on a mill ship, right? Uh, you guys can actually be on either a mills or cadence because the two ships are going to be tethered together for most of this mission. Um, I think, um, I can't remember. Kevin, you established that your ship has living space, but it's very it was, crude. It was basically, the living space was like, I threw some cops in. Basically. Yeah. Now, um, you did not upgrade that during... No. Okay, I think we were thinking about upgrading it and decided not to. Yeah. So, um... Bridge. Um, what is the other thing I wanted to ask? So, yes, because you don't have any living space, people are probably spending most, if not all, of their time in Cadence Ship. But mm -hmm. um, that is not to say that uh, you can't hang out in the Gemini. Not the Gemini, the, the Galanga. Mm -hmm. When are we going to finally make it illegal for uh, us, anybody, to have names that start with the same letter? There's going to be a net total of 24, <laughs> or 24 proper nouns in the campaign, and once we get to that, it's done. There will also be 24 <laughs> pronouns. There will be 24 pronouns. Every character gets one unique <laughs> pronoun, and then we're done. I'm adding numbers to the end. <laughs> okay. Um, Fatima Ru um, comes. Okay. So, anybody else? I still need a second to wrap up these two things. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if I'm hanging out, I'm hanging out on a meal ship, and I'm really deep diving into the, like, net space that they've provided for, for us. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, I took a copy without asking the permission of the ship captain of the ship's computer. Oh, and okay. I've uploaded it into the space so that we could kind of communicate back and forth with each other um, okay. without having to have a networked version of it. I just have like a local copy. Okay. Um, I like that. Um, um, I've done a lot of my other prep already, like kind of knowing what is to come with battles. Um, I made sure that I brought my EMP shots. And yeah. I'm kind of just like fiddling with my charms absentmindedly while I'm like hanging out in virtual MySpace. So I I hate to I always hate to make somebody's uh, cool upgrade that they just got relatively unhelpful. Are and you about to do the monster hunter to me? Are you about to nerf my heavy <laughs> bow gun? Okay, so the deal is, um, Zenotians are an entirely biological race. Um, they share some similarities to the technological side of uh, Elfin. Um, they actually don't use any electronics. Um, so I I will say they... We can have a discussion about whether or not your EMP things affect brain waves. <laughs> and if so... Uh, and if so, there might be some, like, brain bugs that we could pull into that, but we would, like, we would just have to figure out how that fits into the story. If we do, it sounds cool as shit, and we'll roll yeah. we'll I, I was but mostly thinking, like, don't have, like robots. we were going to find spaces where they would end up being useful. At the end of the day, they're still regular bullets. I'm just very excited to try my new toy. Sure, I like that. Um, yeah, so the other thing I was going to say is, I don't remember if we discussed this last time, but you, um, you were, your home planet was destroyed by the notions. Um, yes. I don't know to what extent Mate feels emotions, but, uh, is he experiencing anything right now? 
Um, I'm sure that they have a larger issue with the Zenosians right. in general, but like the hard facts around what they did on that planet, I'm gonna say for right now, Mate doesn't have memories of that. Oh! Yeah, I hate to play the amnesia card all the time, but I think in this case it makes sense that they aren't allowed to remember this. Like, no, almost really like they protected themselves from trauma and they locked it into a raw yeah. file and they don't know the, the password. In other examples, when Mate has not known something, it has been because of a disconnect from the network or from uh, internal damage. In this case, Mate um, just like has has given themselves amnesia. Is that correct? Yep, 100% cool as shit yeah that's definitely and i would also say maybe a part of that like the part of their memory that still knows this has yeah. put them into a space so that they can feel happy before this mission which is why they're hanging out in the mills like you know vr zone <laughs> that's great amil are you are you uh chilling with uh mate in the zone in the zone yes uh i don't really do it. So, i don't actually really <laughs> have to access it um, you, well, you can still access it from like a laptop. Yeah, you could just go yeah. to like a PC or your like space phone. And you go to www.myspace2.com. Yeah, because it would be two. Uh, there's there's a code of there's a code of conduct, and it's just like I solemnly swear that I'm up to no good, and you're like, please sign. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm not actually gonna be hanging out there. I'm gonna be spending okay. like my time in the. I'm just gonna trust that they're like up to no good and okay. um i'm going to uh spend my time like on the ship because i'm kind of piloting it so i'm like monitoring stuff okay yep um and and while you're monitoring stuff you can probably also be like scanning for like you know asteroids in the area that have like cool methods or something yeah like so that. I actually i got i got an enhanced right. sensor suite so most of my time is like me uh taking for a test drive so like as we're passing an asteroid i'll do a scan and see what i get see like oh i need to tweak stuff so i'm just tweaking stuff as we go oh man i love scanning planets in mass effect <laughs> yeah um i have a question as oh, yeah. mate for a meal uh -huh. um i'm just do, gonna text do a, you do i get a high importance email yes this is actually super high important and it's because the the ship's AI is now like ravenously eating up information on the, the the web, and wants to know how long you've had this ship for. Um, oh, um, Emil's no longer trying to hide that information from the party, right? Um, no, I think after the first thing, right? You don't care that we know. Yeah. So okay, uh, I'm going to. Uh, Respond like I'm not, okay. I'm gonna hit. Make sure not to hit reply all. And I'm going to <laughs> say, how long was the last mission? Was the last um, mission? The last mission took about. Uh, oof, I'm pulling numbers out of my ass here. I'm gonna say the mass. The last mission was about three days. Um, for the the first th thingy. Um, oh, okay. And uh, about a week total. I think I've had this but ship. But it's been like, like a month since then. Yeah. I've, I've had the ship eight months. Okay. I'm just going to say eight months. Mm -hmm. In parentheses, sheepishly. Okay. I'm just going to reply back. And I'm not going to send it back to all because I noticed that you didn't reply everyone else. <laughs> no, I assume that you did not send the, the email to everyone in the first place. No, I sent I sent it to our group chat. Oh, okay, okay, cool. Yeah, so I'm just responding back to Emil, and I'm like, oh, that's cool. Do you think the ship needs any additional upgrades or maintenance? I mean, I'm always up for upgrading the ship. Um, yeah, we could we could think about that. We should do that after this mission. I'd, I'd really like to learn more about your ship. Yeah, cool. Um, by the way, I have... Finished uploading the first of the two images. I finished editing them. I always just take a picture of my sketchbook with my phone, and then um, the image is at my phone's camera. Always takes them at this 
these like ridiculously high resolutions, which I'm not complaining about, but it also is like uh Roll20 will not allow me to upload a file that big. I mean you um, gotta love high res assets. Yeah, so I had I have to downsize them and then uh crop them and then send them over and that is what I just finished. So um we can start in a few seconds. Okay, cool. Did I did I do good? Uh that mostly fits there make this a little bit bigger so it fills the whole canvas come up and there we go okay um this one that one i need to turn on fog of war on both of these fog of war is a very specific term and it's funny that it became a like universal video game term yeah it's used very often okay so um back to objects obscuring a vision <laughs> in a video yeah. game um so i have not i did not think to go ahead and grab a token for um cadence ship before the game, but I do have a token for the Galanga, so let's get that bad boy on there. Um, Quick question, and... where are we physically at right now? Are we on the ship? Are we, like, en route? You guys are currently on... Most of you are on Caden's ship, which is tethered to the Galanga, and as of right now, <clears throat> um, you guys are essentially in orbit around the Fatima Ru. Um, okay. remember that the Fatima Ru is the size of a small planet or large moon. Yeah. Um, I would say if you split the difference between the size of the Earth and the moon, that's about where we're thinking. Um. So Mars. Okay. Right. Mars. Which is what yeah. Kevin said last time. Um, yes. So it's, it's sizable. It has multiple continents. Um, and you guys are it, it is large enough that it has its own gravitational pull and so um you can rotate around it and um why did i say rotate around it orbit there's a word for that um <laughs> you, you weren't wrong i was not wrong yeah so um let me go ahead and make as long as we're not revolving around it that would be weird yeah uh you could be <laughs> centrifuging around it i suppose um <laughs> that is kind of weird um, yeah, Mars, Mars is about the size of Eurasia. My Asia or Eurasia? Eurasia. Eurasia <laughs> um, in, in surface volume or in like if you took like by width? Surf surface volume. You can see here. Really? Mars. Neat. Okay, cool. So, um, you guys are <clears throat> orbiting around it. Um, you can, uh, by using some of the, the Caden ships, um, built in, like, um, optic systems, you can look down, uh, through the cloud layer of, um, of the Fatima Ru and see that there is a, um, it's kind of like flocks of birds that you would see flying through the sky, except they are much, much bigger than birds because um, they are, like, noticeable. You can you can make them out in the sky. Um, and so, uh, at a guess, you would think that some of these are probably um, maybe hundreds of feet wide. Um, and there are uh, flocks of them flying around. So that seems to be the first part of um, anti-aerial resistance you'll have to worry about. And also, um, Malati, who was a good student, can tell you that the Zenotians have um, anti-aerial cannons, essentially. They're a little bit more like giant snails with cannons um, grown out of their backs. But um, they can blast down a ship that gets too too close. So if you guys are going to get down to the planet, 
you're going to want to use some method that is uh, very fast and gets you down there before things have a chance to shoot you down. Um, is there any way that I could use the aspect that we got from the last game sure. for the Zenotion specs? Would that tell us anything about the cannons themselves or the mechanics in them? Like, And also, could I just if you, deep dive if comes, into them? Yeah, hold on to that, because um, as soon as you need a bonus or something, have that ready to, to fire off. Um, okay. The, uh, yeah, I mean, that would tell you like the firing range of their cannons and stuff like that. Um, that'll be very helpful when you guys need to, like, avoid projectiles or something. Um, I will say Caden's ship has, um, boarding pods, which would normally be used to, uh, you basically just, uh, put troopers in them and then launch them out of a cannon, like torpedoes, into <laughs> other ships. Yeah. Uh, but, um, you can just as easily just shoot them into the ground. Um, um... I would, I think that whichever ship that Roy is on, he would be protecting it with hard light object. Like he would be casting it on the entire ship, and I know that's a big call, so I would have to roll resolve. I think for big it. call. Um, you guys are are not being shot at currently. Um, if you were going to do a, a hard light object, you would probably be able to do it if you did a um. As long as you weren't making like a bubble around the ship and you were just doing yeah i was thinking like a localized panel of type of covering over whatever yep. area was being fired at yep um i think that would be really cool and i think that's within reason um for narrative purposes i'm all right with you doing like a um you know like a like a 20 foot by 20 foot shield or something like that um but that's not going to be an issue unless the you guys want to take one of your two ships actually in atmosphere to get down there. Otherwise, um, you have Avalon's space shuttle, you have the Galanga, um, and other than that, you, I'm. If you guys can come up with something else, let me know. I have a question. Uh, yeah. How many how many bodies can the reef fit? Can each of the the boarding pods? No, the wraith. Ruta's wraith. Oh, the wraith. Um, the wraith is intended to be a single a single pilot ship. I think that um, if you were going to Tetris it, you could probably fit in um, three people. Okay. Um, it would be a squeeze. You would be kind of like college students fitting into a phone booth. Um, and even then, I don't know. I, I don't know, cause, cause here's the thing. I don't want to say that your wraith can um, drop into the atmosphere from orbit and land without taking damage, because that would be me establishing that it can take, um, it can take an impact moving at like several hundred feet per second without like being damaged. I don't want to establish that. Take vehicle. That makes sense. Okay. I get um, it. Now that said, that said, the boarding pods, um, uh, I think that they, they can, they have a different kind of boarding pod they would use for this, but they can send vehicles down after you. So, um, okay. so, yeah, I think that you guys you guys will have access to your vehicles while on world. Um, you don't have to worry about that. Okay, cool. I'm going down with the Wombat. I think I'm in their ship. Okay. Um so does everybody is everybody comfortable with drop shipping down or does anybody have any other ideas they want to explore? Yeah. Okay. Um I'm in cool that it. case, um hmm. I think that we need to have, because Caden is staying behind, and we have already established that Caden is going to provide some um, aerial support for you guys. Mm -hmm. I think it's appropriate to determine whether you guys get down there safely. I think we need Caden to roll piloting. Um, but uh, since this is, uh, since I don't want to be the person to roll that, 
Mm. I would like, I think I want Kevin to, because Kevin is the party's pilot. So I'm giving, yep. you, I'm giving you permission to Caden right now in Player's Journal. Kevin? I'm rolling pilot. Uh, hold on. Remember, you're not rolling on your character. Um, okay. So, uh, alt double click on Caden. Um, you can find him in NPCs down at the bottom. Uh, go a little further down. Um, Caden, there you go. Oh, wait. You have access to him. You should be able to access his. Oh, shit. Sorry. Hold on. Hold on. Um, alt. Come on. And then edit. Uh, I gave you access to see him, but I need to give you access to edit him. Save changes. Try again. Character sheet. Um, skills. Yep. Okay. Oh, no, did I not? I didn't fill out all of his skills. So let's give him a piloting of three, I think is appropriate. And roll. Eleven is very Ooh, good. Yeah, that's legit. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So I think as the um, as your drop pods are going down, um, I'm it... gonna calculate the ideal suicide burn distance. So you'll accelerate. <laughs> everyone, everyone in here is everyone in here comfortable with pulling a lot of G's? I mean, Ruta's basically born to do that. All right. All right. So I'm gonna set, I'm gonna set, I'm gonna like get really, really crazy with it. Like, I'm gonna ask you like, what, how many G's are you comfortable with? How many G's are you comfortable with? And I'm gonna set like, everyone like, <laughs> well, well, also the non-biologicals can like within a lot more G's. Yeah. So like, Roy and, Roy and mate, you're gonna pull 50 G's for three seconds. No, Roy the human. Oh, Roy's oh, a human, shit. yep. Okay, all right. Mm. Uh, well, mate, you're going to pull 50 Gs for three seconds. <laughs> then the pod's going to slam you back around so you don't crush the important bits. And you're going to pull 50 more Gs for three seconds. Everybody else is going to pull seven Gs for an excruciating, like, 25 seconds. It's going to slam you back around so your spine doesn't collapse. Then you're going to pull seven more Gs. Until you just <laughs> barely stop before you hit the ground. That's very good. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Auto respond is going to kick in. Why is it worse on the uh, say... non biologicals? Oh, yeah, because why? they don't have to worry about their. They don't have to worry about um, brain failure. Oh, well, okay. actually, it's more of a spine crushing thing. Yeah. Yeah. But um, um, they don't have weak, fleshy bodies. Also, also a note to everybody: we're going to employ a little bit of litho breaking. Uh. <laughs> So be aware. Just word. Um, <laughs> so, um, and I think while you guys are doing that, um, uh, Emil and uh, Mate, your pod is going to be able to get down first. Um, okay. Because you're you're going down the fastest. Everybody else, I think, is going to be um, delayed a little bit because uh, they need to move slower in order to not die. Um, and so, as you're going down, some of the big birds start closing in on your pods. And because of that very good roll Kevin just did for us, uh, Kevin was able to successfully pop them out of the air. Now, by the time that you land, um, a few more birds have already come to investigate. But um, now you have some time. So, um, uh, do I have a... I'm gonna go to my sprites. Sprites, uh, mechanical, ground vehicles. Come on, help, help me out here. Sorry, I'm picking out a good sprite to represent your pods so I can drop them off, kind of. Um, that one would look decent if I flipped it upside down. Um, I could use that one. All right, this is what I'm going to use. Um, click, and where's my where's my rotator? 
get go. Okay, so so this is gonna be your uh, your pod here. I think that actually, when flipped on its side like that, looks remotely podish. Um, so you guys yeah. have landed on the um, the highest peak, which we, which we had decided in advance was the safest place for you to arrive. Landing is a genius word. Sure. Um, everybody except Hayden has arrived. So that includes all of your vehicles as well as Brad, Nico, Dirk, uh, Mesa, Anwar, and Malati. Every and every pod has a small crater underneath. Sure. Yeah. Um, it's like Dragon Ball Z when the Saiyan ship lands. Yeah. Um, okay, so... Right, what are you praying for? Just a heads yeah. up, Anae has stepped out to, uh, I think, take care of some laundry for a second. She'll be right back. Um, so, let's see. What can I What can I tell you about the world now that you're overlooking it? Um, hmm. So, I think that you are able to... Uh, looking around the landscape, and remember they were talking about space the size of um, a small continent, uh, maybe a large island. So there are multiple villages um, just on this one like plateau that you're on now. And um, looking around with a like some binoculars, you can get a view of these villages. They are. Um, they're actually hard to make out at first because they're designed a lot like the Shire, where a lot of the buildings are underground with grass growing above them. Um, you actually are primarily able to identify them because of these... Um... Sorry to interrupt. I'm going to have to step out too and help with the laundry. I'll be right back. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Like five minutes, five, ten minutes. Sure. You're able to identify these villages because there are these... Um, these structures that kind of look like um like trees without leaves uh growing around them that might be decorative or they might serve some purpose um except they appear to be like golden so there's some kind of organic plant-like shape but clearly decorative in nature and all of the villages have these um hanging out around them you also see the paths between the villages are marked by these um it's like there's a there's like a single strip of like golden material heading between each of the villages it's a little like a highway but it looks like the strip itself is maybe only like a foot wide so um whatever that could be and uh to cut to the important part you are able to see the um, the next peak over in the mountain is uh, it has a large golden structure uh, pointing out of it, and that is what Malati was able to identify as the comms building. If you'll remember, you need to get into the comms room so you can send out an SOS beacon, and then after that you can start making your way to the 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 place, the capital. Yeah, um, I thought we were going to get Aeneas to handle this part of the mission. To just, to just uh, pop, to pop, just, pop. To just pop, pop, pop. Um, because so we might want to wait till Aeneas gets back. Okay, cool. Because that should be totally feasible. I'm pretty sure I didn't give an upper limit to the range of her ability. No, I definitely didn't because she can fucking warp to Nox's ship on at will. It's so, more of, isn't it more of like a how many times she does it and how many people she does it with yeah so she's gonna be pretty tired after she finishes uh running that um but even with all of your people which is what are we looking at five people in your party five people in the other party <clears throat> um jesus one two three four five Let's six do. seven eight nine ten eleven well, I we can have some 11 people, people. We can have some people cover the distance on foot with Max, and mm -hmm. the other the other ones are going to zip over. Yeah. Um, oh, we also rent jeeps, so there's jeeps on the way yep. down. So you guys have you guys have jeeps. You have a couple Max. Um, you have a few a few other options, but. Uh, one thing to consider, and we'll we'll wait for our our actual like 
go live until they get back mm -hmm. because we're waiting on um, Avalon. But um, the you you guys might want to move quickly to get out the SOS beacon just because it is inside of um, <clears throat> a building and it's safe. It's inside of a building, and it's a building that um, once they've seen you and they have time to respond to you, they could very easily um, make that just an absolute nightmare to get into. Ah. So if you can get in there before they have time to respond to you, it might be a lot easier. Mm. So I got a question. Yes. Did something happen to the SOS beacon? Because the elfin that were on this ship... Um, Clearly had at least as much advance notice to get Melody off the ship, but not enough to activate an SOS beacon? Mm hmm So, um... Did it happen in, like, seconds? Kind of. So it happened, uh, sort of simultaneously, and it happened at, um... Spaceports and, uh, communication spaces and places like that first. So... The way that the notions like to do a um, an invasion is to spread out spores first, which are hard to detect if you're not um, if you don't know to be scanning for them. Ah, um, so they activate they sent spores into specific locations and then yeah. pop them up simultaneously. Yep, wow. and and you would probably want to have them grow like inside of vents or something, places that people wouldn't look. So the the things that are going to do the attacking are um, going to be able to be large enough to do damage, but also go undiscovered until they're just ready to do a surgical attack. Um, and then they would have simultaneously, um, while they're doing that to take out the, the points of exit and um, places that they can send out an SOS or something, they would also have those same spores just growing news the notion okay. in the soil. Um, so, uh, someone should invent a Zenotion spore detector. Uh, people have. Um, then why didn't they employ it? So, because they didn't know to be concerned about it. Because, um, I think Malati will probably be the one to tell you that. This, uh, this is, ooh, I don't... I think I'm willing to put my foot down and say this is the first time ever that a, um... no, I'm not going to say that. So it is very, very rare for an Aelthin world ship to be um, attacked by, to have an, as an ocean invasion. Um, humans and other species get invaded because they're dumb and they have open borders and all that. Um, <clears throat> The Aelfin have incredibly tight border security, and they have, at all of their spaceports, they have mandatory um, scannings on every person who came in. So they don't know how um, the spores got on the planet. It shouldn't mm. have been possible. I'm going to go out and mm. just say, Amil says this out loud, um, they're very <laughs> dumb because it would cost them very little to implement a technology that has the potential of preventing, I mean, cause it's like, okay, it's a very rare event, but that very rare event causes the death of the entire, of every single individual on the ship. That's worth spending money preventing. Right, um, but it's kind of like, well, it's the reason that like, we have dogs that can sniff out bombs um, and we keep the dogs who can sniff out bombs in airports. We don't have dogs who can sniff out bombs spread in an even grid every hundred feet across the entire continent. Well, that's... We put them in the place that the... Because it costs enough to implement that it's infeasible to implement planet-wide. And the detectors, which were in place at the airport, did not go off. So... The spores did not, presumably, come in through the spaceport. Um, this is, this is, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say they have other policies in place that I'm not thinking of, but they have, they, there's a reason that 
you almost never see Aelfin um, worlds get invaded. There's a lot of security and procedures in place that make it very hard for this to happen. So they all somehow failed, or this was a coordinated effort from within. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, oh there's think? a guy on the inside, you say? Maybe. <laughs> um, oh, where do you think Rudit is of this? This whole like background on, like, does so he think I it's think odd, Ruda, or does he really not know anything to know? I think Ruda knows that. Aelfin ships are never invaded by Xenotians. I don't think he is, um... I don't think he knows all the specifics. I don't think he has is a, the kind of person who would pay a lot of attention to government procedures, you know? Nope. He probably, probably has a... Yeah, he probably has a general idea that there are procedures in place. Um, the other thing I forgot to mention is that it's relatively rare for the notions to do a spore based attack um where they they like prevent exit from the planet um more often what they do is um the Zenotians uh do a store a spore based attack to take over the first planet and then they build up a fleet on the planet and they just send like millions of uh organic spaceships basically to slam into planets and just zerg rush them um they did not do that in this case because this planet would have been able to defend itself against something like that i they, think zion and Aeus are back yeah they are oh. Aeneas, avalon um we had discussed last time that you had a plan to get everybody from this first mountain that you landed on to the mountain that has the sos beacon and you were going to use your astropath powers to just um, warp people back and forth. Do we Do all want to go to the SOS tower? Well, the SOS t tower, or the communications room is where the SOS beacon is, and we need to get that to go off so that um, people can come help. We should Do we need more than one person to like set off the SOS beacon? No, we don't, but it might be very dangerous in there. True. Okay. But yeah, no, uh, if I can just start warping people over there, I, uh, I'm i definitely down for it. Uh, we did establish that I would probably be pretty tired afterwards, right? Yeah. Where are we, how close are we to the ground when we're doing the warping? Um, I, well, so Avalyn can only warp to a place she's very familiar with or a place that she can see. So, um, the nice thing is you're warping from a mountaintop to a mountaintop. So instead of having to walk like, you know, 40 miles or whatever, she can just like blink and be over at the other mountaintop and then blink and be back at the first one. So you're not, um, yeah, I was just going to say that Roy, Roy doesn't need that to occur yeah. for him. So while she's teleporting people back and forth, Roy is going to go go alone and just scout the area on his uh, mag platform and move himself individually over to the next mountaintop. Okay, fantastic. I think that we should have the majority of people be warped there, but we have to have enough people to bring our equipment. We okay. have to have, we cannot have Avalon be warping like whole mechs because that would right. destroy her. <laughs> We've got to warp everybody, but like maybe Zai, me, Rudo with his mech, and then one or two other people who are willing to drive a jeep. Right. Um, I think that works. Yeah. Sure. Um, Mesa, has a, Mesa has a tank, and I think uh, Brad will volunteer to drive one of the jeeps. Okay. Um, okay. So, all right, that makes things interesting. So, I'm grabbing the whole party copy and i'm going to the comms building i'm going to paste everyone in uh i'm gonna make you guys just a little bit smaller on this map um that'll have to do okay um how do i reveal area polygon click Give me a second. I'm just um, 
clearing up the fog of war in the, the place you're going to land. Click. And let's move the party hey, over here. Yes, yes, Kev, uh, Jeff. Oh, never mind. It okay. instantaneously answered my question. Never mind. <laughs> um, and. Oh, sweet. Ben, remind me not to look left. Okay, I don't think you have to worry about uh, spoilery stuff. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, I I think you guys can see to the to the north and south of where your characters are. That's supposed to be a cliffside. So what you're on now is a um, a relatively wide uh, like mountain path that winds organically up the mountain, and um, you guys just you. A lot of you just teleported over, so um, so that's going to uh, save you from having to drive up. Um, uh, are we gonna have a scene where the people that end up driving and flying uh, have to fight, or no? We'll uh, I'll I'll figure that out. Okay. <laughs> um. So for for the start of this scene, at least those characters just aren't present. All right, I'll move my guy. I'll move. Um, I'm out. Okay. Here. And um, I think uh, who else was driving? Ruta and Roy. And uh, Mesa, uh, and Ruta, and uh, Liko is with the party. Roy, you were flying over in your your thingy. Uh huh. And, um. I think that's that's probably good. So, um, hmm. okay, okay. Here's here's how we're gonna do this. So I didn't. There's so many things going on here with uh, world building. I'm kind of uh, skipping, like missing some of them. I think one thing to know about this world is that because it is infested by Zen Oceans. There's a um, if you if you can think anybody who has played uh, Starcraft knows the the like fucking gunk that the Zergs <laughs> let out, you've got a a good sizable amount of that gunk is kind of just like spreading across this planet. Yeah. yeah. Um, which is a tragedy because elfin planets are essentially just one giant planet-wide garden they're gorgeous and you've got this like plague that is uh spreading across them so um notably this uh see how there's a kind of crisp geometric semicircular entrance to this uh cave that is a um that is a like dome it's a like a Greek a Greek style um, circular uh, cut into the wall with um, pillars around it, um, but the actual door itself is much more organic and natural, and it looks like a, a naturally occurring cave mouth that just happens to be the door to this like temple kind of mm -hmm. place. Um, there is a lot of that infestation stuff growing around this area and notably there is a like there's a like vein that is growing along the ground has come up this cliffside to the south and passed into the um the building thing um, so I'm gonna draw that in now, but, um... Oh, you know what? I need... Oh, never mind. That's not how that works. There. Um...
Uh, yeah. So, um, can everybody see the thing I just drew in? Yep. Yeah, okay. So there is a um, vein that is like growing along the ground and, um, hmm. Can anybody roll, let's see, I need some kind of knowledge roll. Anybody that's currently there. Yeah, maybe Blovin would know this. Um, I think medical, if that's one of the skills, would not be a bad role for this. Um, what kind of skills do we have that could give you knowledge about aliens? Uh, maybe anatomy that could be like evolutionarily conserved across species. Yeah, let's go with Matt medicine. So can you do a medicine check for me? I can. Okay, 11. Great. So um, what you discover, what you realize, um, and I think you probably like lean in on this thing and, and take a look at it with um, with your tools. This is actually one giant um, nerve. Nerve is the is the term for the actual like the the like string, right? It's not a nerve is not like a single dot in the system. A nerve is like a vein, but for Thoughts. Uh, Are you No, I I think because I'm thinking of not synapse or neuron. I so I think I'm thinking Axon. of nerve. Nerve being the actual like cable that passes. Yeah, signal. like a neuron is yeah. one length of that. A nerve right, would okay. imply something more with like a muscular architecture. So it has to do sure. with like physical movement, I guess. Whereas a synapse or neuron would have more to do with like the mental processing of the alien structure. Okay. Yeah. So um, you can think of it as a a nerve or a synapse, but it is um, it it is some kind of neurological um, system that is uh, uh, piping some kind of neurological information into this dark cave temple thing and out to the countryside. I share this information. Okay, what do you guys <laughs> want to do about that? Do you want to just keep going? Hmm. Does it look like there's any way for us to like I guess I don't know if this is exactly how it would work, but do we have anything with us that we could like essentially like block it and stop the flow? <laughs> I mean, you could you could hit it with an axe. Can I like shove my quarter staff down in there and see if anything happens? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't so, think you even need to roll for this. So word of um, word of uh, interest before we do right. Mm -hmm. um, do, do we think that it's impossible that they don't know that we're here, or are we still operating under conditions of stealth? So they, um, definitely some of them know that you're here, but, um, Melody at least can inform you that, uh, they're not a perfect hive mind where every Zenotion knows everything that every other Zenotion knows. Um, they need to pass information to each other and um they don't have things like radio necessarily um they they have like communication bugs that will um that will handle the uh information and she's never dealt with them physically but um it's possible that um if this is a essentially a like telephone wire heading out of this building that there's a communication bug inside this building um are they on the radio with us telling us this or no melody's with you no i'm i'm not in that group well then yeah that's a good question do 
how do our radios work? Like, would we be able to just like talk to a mill at any given time? Like, do we all have like walkie talkies or something? I think everybody who doesn't have a mindset would have to have a, you know what? I don't think it is, I, th I don't think it's walkie talkies. I think it's literally like smartphones. That okay, cool. Can, can I just work. drop some messages in our group chat to let a mill know? Yeah. They're, they're smartphones that have um, radio capabilities if they're not within, um, if they're not provided with satellite or internet. Um, so I'm, I'm imagining that like Ruda, Emil, and Roy are flying like really low to the ground in like a really fucking cool V formation <laughs> with like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we get just like a uh, notification on the HUD about this and i'm gonna i'm gonna uh open up a com with roy and i'm gonna be like roy do you want to collect some data of course and i'm gonna be like i'm gonna be like let's probe this uh let's probe this wire for electrical signals oh okay so you want to do that before they they damage it in any way yeah okay um no the so party guys... probing commences yeah so you guys would be able to see this um, thing, uh, growing down, like, across the countryside, and I think once it gets to the bottom of the mountain, I think it joins a, like, web of similar veins that are Gross. kind of spread across the, the countryside. I'm going to, I'm going to open up a comm with the whole group, and I'm going to say, here's my idea. We're going to probe it for electrical signals, and then we're gonna cut it, and we're gonna collect that data, and that's how we'll know. I want the data to know, like, data of when it feels pain, right? Ooh. And okay. we'll use that information if, if we're ever in any, we'll probe other things, and then we'll know when we're in danger. If the thing feels pain, you know, we'll know now. Okay. Um, I like that. My my only okay. Did you say that you have a, a the notion detector? Uh, I think that I do. I do. My only thing is I don't know if um. Actually, I just realized something. Um. I don't like. I think that you can definitely start by getting a, a sample of that data, um, and then going from there. I don't know that you would be able to like read its thoughts in the same way that not I... read its thoughts, right? Not read its thoughts as in interpret the signal, but like Amil is thinking that if it feels extreme pain, the thing lights up like a yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, like okay, that makes sense. It's, it's not like I understand the language, but I do understand if it's you would pain. definitely have to work with. Blubbin on that because yeah. Blubbin, if of anybody in the party, I think Blubbin is the only person who would have a chance at being able to interpret um, neural signals in two directions actually, because Blubbin is both a doctor and a, a psychi psychologist. So and because um, I'm a fish, and because you're a fish, <laughs> who we all know are intimately familiar with the neurological system. They sure um, are. I'll help if I know about it and I'm directed to. Okay. Um, so, you guys, because you guys are going to be, um, are going to be doing that, then, um, I think that slows down things for a couple minutes. Um, while the party is working on getting that data, does anybody else want to be doing any kind of groundwork inside this cave? Root, can you, just can to be you... clear, Root is not here. I'm out with Roy and Emil yeah. in, in our vehicles, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um... this applies to Avalyn, Mate, and Blubbin. Yeah, there's something Blubbin's I want helping. to check. What do you want to check? Um, I have, like, my eyes are augmented. Would I technically be able to, like, like, scope ahead, but, like, not get too far away from the group? 
That's a very good question. Um, yeah, I have the retinal implant. It says one of my eyes has been replaced by a nano cybernetic prosthetic. Functions like a normal human eye, but is capable of changing zoom levels and can de detect a greater level of detail in the dark. So. Okay. Well, then, yeah, you could definitely be be looking into this um, cave system, and because you've got that, I will go ahead and just say that um, I can show you as far as um, you would be able to see if it was fully lit, which it is not. So I'll go ahead and reveal, uh, click, click, click. Click, click, uh, click, click. There we go. Um, so I revealed the, the, like, entrance part of the cave. That is as far as you can see just looking. Um, I think if you want to see any more, you would have to kind of get in there. Um, um, I think, uh, definite, probably just, just Liko, Dirk, Melody, and Anwar are going to set up a, um, just kind of a, a perimeter, um, at the, at the entrance being ready to respond to any, um, anything that like comes out. Uh, one thing you will note, Avalyn, um, as soon as you get inside the complex, it becomes pretty much impossible to follow this nerve cable anymore because it's, um, because there's so much like uh, infestation in there that it kind of just blends in with all of the rest. And this infestation looks like, um, it looks like, meat um it looks like you. the inside of this cave is being transformed into the insides of a living creature so yeah. i'm guessing if i opened the third eye it would look absolutely awful in here actually go ahead so um you open your third eye and it is um so the notions are a are a void in the warp. They do not appear at all. They're the same as um, as robots. Um, okay. Which raises the question: Do they have a? Do they actually silence the void, or do they actually silence the warp, making you incapable of detecting anything, or are they just a non-entity? And I think it's probably more. Well, I don't want, I think if I say that they're silencing it, I would be committing to saying that you guys would not be able to use your powers here, and I don't want to commit to that. So I'm just going to say it is unsettlingly normal compared to what you're seeing with your physical eyes. The warp looks exactly like you would expect the warp to look in just a normal countryside cave. That makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, Everything is okay here. <laughs> okay, so um, <laughs> let's go ahead and just say that a little time has passed and the uh, the remaining members have caught up. So um, it's been probably like an hour, uh, I think, um, maybe half an hour, uh, depending on the speed that you guys were able to move at. Um, so I need Liko and Brad. I don't know if I'm missing anyone else. Um, or not, Liko, Mesa. So, I'm going here and got these two off. I think that's it. Okay, so, um, how do you guys want to proceed now? You guys got a tap into the, um, into the signal, and I don't think you got any usable information right away, but you are feeding that into you would need to feed that into some kind of database to collect a baseline um, and then you could detect deviations from that baseline. Um, do, do you want to use your local locally hosted server for that? Yeah. Wait, no. The locally hosted server is up on the Galanga. I don't have it with me. No, I think you would be able. You would have a. It's close enough that you could like satellite um, communicate. Yeah, it's like fairly fairly low latency. Yeah. Okay. Cool. 
Um, okay, yeah. So you are feeding that into your your local server. Um, and, and I'm going to say that you have essentially just like spiked a like a device into it that yeah. is feeding that up. So you guys don't have to like be present to handle that. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so the whole party has shown up. You guys have vehicles. I'll grab them later, but you're not going to be able to fit vehicles inside of this facility, so it's kind of a moot point right now. Um, uh, how would you like to proceed? Oh, um, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and just say that uh, while you guys were waiting, a, um, a few the notions uh, rushed out, and um, the people that are on door duty took care of them very quickly. And since then, no others have attempted to come out. Um, I'm going to actually. I want to do something real quick. Yeah. Um, I'm a little bit nervous uh, sending that data up to even a server that's hosted on the Galanga. Okay. So I am going to it? roll a, yes, I'm going to, um, I'm gonna roll a computer check because I want to both encrypt it and create a VPC. I, I wanna create another mini VPC hosted on that. So if it like infects that, it just, I just shut it off. Interesting, okay, uh, software. Software. Real right. quick. I'm still sitting in that server. Is that going to be a problem for me? No, because I rolled two sixes. Oh, that's you rolled, great. Uh, one short of the highest possible number. Um, yeah, so uh, we, we'll... Uh, I think that you just, like, on the fly, you just had, like, a, a spot of inspiration and you wrote in, like, one extra line of code and created, like like unintentionally created a new kind of virtual machine machine um so that's cool um the me ai pops into sentience and goes what am i <laughs> i'm being fed gross data yeah um okay so um you're heading inside i think um have you guys so you guys have decided that there's some kind of communication bug inside, probably. Um, somebody's, uh, I think that Melody will go ahead and suggest that. So, so two things need to happen in here. First, um, somebody needs to, somebody needs to find the SOS beacon. And second, somebody needs to take out that communication thing so that it um doesn't like call reinforcements um whichever place your team goes the um the wombat team will go the other way um what are you guys thinking what would be easiest for the team guys you probably head right for the communication what try to get the communication Dropping out a lot. Yeah. Whoever that was talking, I couldn't tell. Yeah, it was um it was Morgan. He said communication bug. Yep. Uh, why this this line, this nerve line, why don't we put an explosive charge on it, try to sneak up on the bug, and then like destroy the bug. Uh I mean if you want to break the if you want to break the line, you can just like like uh, Anwar has a knife. He can just cut it. <laughs> yeah, but I want to collect the data on what it's what its pain feels like. So you want to oh okay. So you want to keep collecting data until the last minute. Until the last minute, cut it and then then collect a little more data on what it tried to send out right as we are killing it. Well, then why don't you just um why don't you just kill it? I don't think you need to cut the cable to do that. Well, because if you cut the cable, then it's dying. It's dying information might not get to your sensor, right? No, I'm cutting the cable after my sensor. So, buggy, sensor, cable. I don't want its pain to reach the outside world. I don't want anything to know that we killed it. Interesting. Okay. I don't want anything to know that we killed it. Sure. Um, so I will go ahead and get a thing down to represent that. Um, 
That's a cool idea. So you guys want to go after the um you guys want to go after the bug? Yeah, no, oh. I'm cool with that. Okay. So I'm gonna start um clarifying language around these things. Um so they all the notions kind of look like bugs. Um but we're going to specify um we're going to use the, the standard communication or the standard naming convention around uh, the notions, which is based around um, kind of like different positions in like a feudal society uh, in the same way that you have like uh, queen bees. So um, in the notions, we're going to categorize them as uh, Queens, and then barons, and then knights, and then drones. Um, so, uh, and Maladi can tell you that um, for each of those types, there are different, <clears throat> like, categories of the notions that... Um, do different things that are needed in both a society and a body, but because the notions are a very biological species, we categorize them by body. So you have like um, the the like communication bug, as I've been calling it, would uh, more appropriately be referred to as a neur a um, neurological baron. Um, there are also like um, the. Uh, the creature that is responsible for transporting, um, like, essentially handling farming and stuff like that planet-wide would be referred to as the Digestive Queen. Um, and then really cool. uh, a, a person that... Um, a, a thing that is responsible for taking out... Um, invasive species which would be you guys um the things that you're most likely to be fighting would be referred to as um autoimmune drones which would be led by autoimmune knights um oh. so does that naming convention make sense to everyone yeah it's yeah. really fucking cool like yeah like cool um by the way morgan um your mic is hard to make out right now it's a little um foggy like you've got kind of a low volume but also it's uh like an indistinct are you like far away from your mic or something no i have my headphones on huh it was much more clear that time i wonder what was different i turned it up a tiny bit but that's it huh okay well it sounds really good right now okay um okay so Um, so you guys want to go after the brain bug. The other party is going after the SOS beacon. Oh no, I grabbed that thing wrong. Um, so I'm going to grab the, uh, the wombat party. They're going to be going with Melody, and she's familiar with the layout of these facilities. So she's going to guide them towards the um the the SOS beacon type room um there I'm going to move them in here you guys are responsible for finding the um the communications bug now as i mentioned the nerve uh the nerve thingy uh becomes impossible to follow once it gets inside of the cave because it blends in with all of the rest of the biological gunk that's coating the walls. Um, there is a passage to the north, a passage to the west, and a passage to the south that has a like um, a film over it. Um, I'm thinking of it kind of like a spider's web, but if it was made out of meat. Um, sure, sure. Yeah. It is gross. Um, so those are your three directions. Uh, how do you guys want to proceed?
Um, I'd vote I'd south, vote but south. I'll go south. with whatever the rest of the group wants to do. South. South. Cool. Um, so, oh no, what have I done? Uh, do I not have roll 20 open anymore? Oh, I hate this mouse. My mouse is very, it's a very, um, finicky touchpad, and also it tends to just, uh, double click whenever it feels like it. Uh, so, that's inconvenient. I wanted to grab this explodey shape and drop it down here to represent that you guys have set the bomb here. Um, okay. So, you guys are in ye old cave. Um, you wanted to go to the south. The south has this, um, has this, this barrier covering it. Um, you're gonna have to find a way to deal with that. Um, what do you want to try? Ruta tries to, like, start chopping it with his giant huge sword. Um, so, hmm. I think I'm gonna need a roll from you. I think you could probably just do a melee roll, um, would be most appropriate. Let's see, um... Yeah, go ahead and give me a melee roll. Okay, you rolled a nine. That's yeah. not actually gonna be quite good enough. Um, I'd like to use an aspect. Sure. I can weave. Fiber muscle weave. Oh yeah, I think that, um... Fibro, did I, did I ever, I, I oh, did in. you know, did you know that it's been uh, a whole week and I did, I actually completely forgot to finish writing everyone's level ups into their character sheets? It's fine, I got um, mine in. I'm pretty sure Fibro Muscle Weave lets you invoke it once for free every scene. I'm going to go back to our, our chat log, but unless I say, unless I'm able to confirm otherwise, you get a free, um, you get a free invoke on that. Um, so you don't have to pay anything. Okay. Uh, let's see. Click, open original, expand, extra, here we go. Fibro muscle leave, blah, 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 blah. You gain this aspect. Should allow you to invoke this aspect after all. Um, now let me say, see if I said what I wanted to do. Um, I said I said that I would let you let you use it once per short rest for free. So um, uh, you're able to invoke uh, fibro muscle weave. That gets your roll up to an eleven. Um, an eleven is not going to. Okay, with an 11, you're able to deal noticeable damage to this mesh, but not enough for you to be able to get through. And you now ha hear scurrying happening on the other side of it. Um, it's your choice. You can either keep hacking, and because you're making progress, you will be able to get through it after a couple minutes. Or, um, because you seem to be alerting a presence, you could move on and um, come back to this later. It's your call. Bruno backs up and he's he's like, "What should we do here?" Hmm. I wonder why there's a barrier here. Uh, yeah. I feel like um, they must be up to something back there. We should keep hacking. Okay. Yeah. Bruno just keeps going at it. <laughs> you just wanted like a thumbs up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's good. Okay. Um all right. So um it's a couple minutes and um Buddha, just as you are um sorry, I gotta do one more thing. Can I um can I do whatever it is that I do to uh try to give some confidence or certainty in the task to Ruta. You know, at a helping kind of maneuver. Yeah. Um, 
Because so so duly noted that you have done that. Unt unless you want a mechanical benefit from it at some point, then um, then I will just note that you've done it, and you don't need to do any rolls or spend any points or anything. Okay. Um. Okay. So here's what I'm gonna give you. Um. Is anybody doing anything else while Wood is chopping? No. Okay. I don't think so. Um, then are, me... are we still actively pumping that data in? Maybe I could begin to sort of just sort of uh, do a Matrix-esque, like, oh, Yeah, you know... that would be perfect. Um, okay, so you can start looking over the data as, um, as it goes. Uh, hmm, what do I want to use for this first encounter? Um... And so that's pretty good. I like that. Um, yeah, I like this one too. Um, Levin is definitely sure that there's treasure on the other side of this mesh. Let's see if he's treasure. Right. <laughs> um, there's just going to be a chest. Okay, cool. So, um, you guys finish, uh, clearing out the mesh, and, um, let me go ahead and polygon reveal, click, click, click. Oh, by the way, what are you guys doing for visibility? Because at least some of you are humans with normal eyes who can't see in the dark. Mm. You guys can just say that you're using, like, flashlights or whatever, which I think is what we said when you were in the, um, the last area? Yeah, I'd use a flashlight. Yeah. Okay, just be aware that, um... Roy's illuminating the area with, uh, his disc drone. Oh, okay, perfect. Then that actually solves the problem. And that's also a hands-off solution, which is good. Because it means anybody who was using a flashlight would be, uh, have to do without one of their hands. Um... Okay, so you go around the corner and you see this thing, and it is uh, creepy and unsettling and vaguely insectoid organic. Um, but it looks like instead of like um, insectoid chitin, it's more of like a um, a rhinoceros's like hide, which is kind of a shell but kind of not. Uh, but in any case, you only get about one second to look at this thing because as um, Ruda is chopping down the barrier, you actually see this thing start scurrying away. And by the time the barrier is like open, it has gone around a corner. Ruda's like, get it. Yeah. Yeah, I want to go kick it with my rocket legs. Um... I would think that Roy would hop onto his mag platform and zip over there as quickly yeah. as possible. Okay, so um, Roy is like way in there. Avalyn, um, you're running behind. Yeah. Okay. Be aware. Um, actually, I I forgot to. I'm gonna give you a consequence. Um, so this is gonna go under your uh, stress and consequences section. Oops. Let's say it is a. I'm going to give you a moderate consequence, and it is going to be uh, exhaustion. Okay. That is because you did that all that teleporting earlier. Um, uh, so Ruda has just finished chopping. Um, Ruda does that with, with uh, Adeline and Roy, too. Okay. So Roy is definitely in the front because Roy is using a... a uh, hover thingy to get over there. Um, is everybody else following? Yes. Okay. I so, yeah, I follow because I'm still on autopilot. So I, I'm hanging back, and I have my um, I have my sniper rifle out. So I'm I'm gonna be in the back, and I'm looking for things that are flying above the party members, so I can like like pick them out. Okay, fantastic. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let's do. Uh, polygon reveal, click. Uh, 
Click. Click, click. All right. So you guys go around the corner and there is a, a batch of these um, these drones. These are actually going to be, um, these are not auto, well, you wouldn't know this. I think that I'm actually going to, uh, I think I'm actually going to just tell you guys because it'll be easier for me to communicate. Um, these are not autoimmune drones. These are nerve neurological drones um but uh yeah so you guys um you guys turn around the corner and there's a bunch of drones one person gets to go what do you do uh roy uses segmented coherence to grab and pull back the original one that was running from us oh shit what did um what did segmented coherence do um this allows the beam saber to function as a whip by adding tactile shells and sections of the beam suspended by a repeating short burst wave of gravitons and an increase to the saber's base power output, which allows it to extend its length. I forgot about that. That's so fucking cool. All right. So this you functions as a grapple time. complementing the mag platform, a grapple and pull move, and as a live wire conduit for divine energy. Okay, dope. Nice. So you have pulled that thing close to yourself. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and... Oh, hold on. I saw Trevor Belmont, which means I need to look. Yep. <laughs> this is very important. Damn, you're, you're like, like three you're seconds like quicker than me. I was getting ready to post the exact these, same uh, with these videos. <laughs> I stole your thunder. Did you know that I love Netflix's Castlevania so much? Sexy it's Alucard. So oh, man. Okay. Yeah. So I never put a shirt on Alucard. So Roy has successfully grappled that thingy and pulled it close. And as um, as Emil is uh, noticing that and uh, pulling down his sights, Emil, can you make a? Do we have a notice check? Um, uh, otherwise, it would be perception. Give me, give me one second. Yep, it's just perception. Can you make me a perception check? Yes, I can. How do I do? How ten? Do? ten is not bad. Ten is not bad. Ten is very good. Oh, by the way, just so you know, you don't have to close your character sheet. If you um, all right, sorry. So first of all, you can hold Alt and double click on any character that has a character sheet, and it'll uh, open it up. Oh, that's cool. Um, but the other thing is, if you double click on the word a mill, it will minimize it, um, and then keep it open, so you can then pop it up back up. It's essential for DMing because you can have like all these character okay. sheets open at the same time. That's cool. That's uh, cool. You can do the same thing with the um, notes, which mm -hmm. you guys don't use very often, but I have. So um. Yeah, Emil, you actually have pretty sharp wits about you today, and you very faintly hear a scurrying, and you turn around in time to see a, um, a fucking, uh, thing closing in on you. Because you rolled fairly well, you're going to get to see it before, um, before it attacks you. Um, this is an autoimmune, uh, thingy majigger. So, um, I'm going to start drawing out some battle line um i'm actually gonna go ahead and reveal a bit of this next area as well um just for in case you guys decide you want to go down there click right um not treasure the real treasure was the friendships we made along the way um <laughs> yeah yeah uh, yeah, Avalyn, that happens. Sometimes, sometimes spooky <laughs> sprites happen. Um, okay, so I'm going to go in here and I'm going to take, uh, blue is fine. Blue! Okay, um, one, two, uh, three, for are you guys seeing these lines i'm drawing in yeah yeah all right uh you guys know know what this is at this point oh you're establishing zones right establishing zones oh yeah okay 
Um, I'm gonna move myself more clearly to be on the uh, one side of the zone. Okay, cool. That's fine. So, um, yeah, those are our zones. We will um, we'll refine them as needed, but that should cover most of it. Um, yeah, bitches. Uh, so now that the encounter has been started in earnest, um, Emil, since you detected that thing, mm-hmm. I think that you have to go next because okay. it was about to take an action. So if you don't take an action, it's going to. Gone. Okay. Remember, you can move one zone away for free um, at every turn. That's like a move action. Um, Emil just opened up right there. Oh, wait, where? Double click. Oh, I see. Yep. Um, so you remember, you can move one zone away for free, and then you can take any, like, standard action. It's basically the, the move action, standard action, free action from D&D. Um, I want to move in here for free. Okay. I want to shout... Can I shout to mate as a free action a single, like, sentence? Hey, look out! Yeah, hey, look out! Yeah. I'm shouting that to mate. Um, and my action that I want to take is I'm, I'm assuming I have my hand on the button that blows up this nerd. Okay, okay. I'm gonna blow, I'm gonna blow up the, um, I'm blowing up the nerve. Okay, so rather than, um, like, change all my lines, I'm just gonna make that explosion thing bigger to uh-huh. remind myself that it has been blown. Um, kablam! <laughs> Kablooey. <laughs> yeah. Bada boom! Bada bing, bada boom! Okay. Um, so, Emil's turn has happened. I think, uh, mate, because Emil gave you a heads up, you can go before scary thing goes. Okay, so I was gonna use the that part of my turn to return back to my shell because I'd been spending that time in the like the ship server okay so that's kind of like your move action is you moving your consciousness back to your body yeah moving back to my body because I've been on autopilot this entire time your body has been trying to sell everybody in the party different um like vitamin supplements not everybody in the party everybody on the original network Uh (laughs) um Yeah, because he was on the net. Oh, whatever. Okay, go on. Oh, yeah. wait. What? As soon as you, like, as you're, like, logging off to avoid getting slaughtered by this thing, it plays the, like, Windows XP, like, shutdown <laughs> sequence. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> go on, mate. What do you do? Um, so I'm just coming back to reality. <laughs> and I'm kind of just taking in my, in, like, in my surroundings. I hear faintly a mill call out to me. So I just mm-hmm. put up my hand and go, hey, Emil, what's up? <laughs> and you see me running away. Okay, mate. So I'm going to uh, turn around. I'm not going to leave this section. Because you have, you just role played amazingly and it was wonderful. Um, this is, um, in not so many words, there's, fuck, I can't remember the word for it. There's there's a, a faint system word for what you just did, and what you've done is in mechanical terms, you have opted to take a um a consequence to yourself that I did not force on you. Mm-hmm. And so in exchange for doing that, you get a fate point. That's how Ooh. it works. So uh, um go ahead and give yourself one extra fate point. So you're up to six. Um and uh yes so that's the end of your turn and you are coming to consciousness uh just in time to see this giant terrifying thing close in on you oh shit um, (laughs) yeah yeah Uh, yeah oh Oh, no roy's Uh, down here messing with the small guys (laughs) yeah my eyes just turned into big x's (laughs) Uh, generic roll. What do we think this thing's attack is? This is a pretty scary thing. It's a an attack bonus of four. Yeah, four. Um, okay, um, mate, you've got a four coming your way. You need to counter that somehow. So you can do a melee roll, you can do an acrobatics roll.
Okay, you um you successfully dodged it. You don't get to counterattack. I no. you did not get the counter ability, did you? I don't think I did. Um, okay, so you don't get to counterattack because you didn't. If you roll defensive and you roll way better than them, you get to counterattack. Um, you did not. You came pretty close, but he doesn't get to do any damage to you, so it it cancels out. Um, do I get to choose where I roll away to, or am I kind of nah. stuck in the same spot? That would have been your your um, move action. So got gotcha. you be in the same zone as you in order to attack you. But uh, let's say that you um, you kind of got off to the side here, but it's uh, you're still in the same zone. Um, who wants to go next? Otherwise, I think Anwar is going to go. Ruta has a clear line of sight at this point, and he's going to shoot the hell out of that beast behind him. Because at this point, he just hears it, like, slurping behind it, behind him. So he turns around. Are you using your, um, your machine gun, your flamethrower, or your, um your sword be aware that if you use your flamethrower it will hit everything in the area i'm pretty sure i have to check the word on it yeah i was gonna say it's spray so would uh beloved and mate have to get out of the way um well let me actually get the uh wording on this so this would be under you can you can do a move and then spray right yeah yeah he gets a free move um it, so maybe if the order is reversed, then yeah. we're this out of the beam, way. Beam, weapons, uh, beam, particle, energy, monobladed, reach, throwing, single fire, huge shotgun, stealth, arcing, explosive spray. Here we go. Um, so you gain the three moves associated with the beam aspect, um, can reach targets behind cover at no increased difficulty as long as you have a reasonable guess to their location, can be used to place aspects on the area such as flaming, smoke screen, plasma, static range of one. Um, I'm going to uh, post these into notes okay. in, at some point, but for now, the most important thing is uh, you have access to all of the abilities from the laser thingy. So um, I think I have it in here. Single flipping powered, of course I didn't write it down. Um, okay, I'm gonna paste a couple things in Discord for the time being, because that's what I've got to work with. Uh, First one and uh, beam, here we go, second one. So beam is very similar to full auto, just in energy form, um, where essentially you can you can take a gamble and, and give up some of the functionality of the weapon in exchange for making it more dangerous. Um, mm. So, um, yeah, uh, those are your options if you're going to use the flamethrower. Okay. Ruda runs over here. Okay, there and, you like, go. Stand, stands in front of the beast. Just so you know, you don't need to be in the same zone as it. You could hit it from one zone over. Can um, I go behind? Uh, the only... Well... Yes, but you're going to have to hustle, which just means that you're going to have a penalty on any acrobatic tolls this turn. Because you're moving two okay. zones over. Yeah, I'm going I'm going right here. Okay. I'm like standing off. I'm standing off against him. And I'm just going to okay. use the beam aspect of the flamethrower. Okay. And so is that um, beam sweep or overheat? Uh, Beam oh. Sweep lets you hit uh, everything in the area, so it lets you hit multiple enemies. Uh, overheat lets you do extra damage. Overheat. Okay. Uh, you hold down the trigger and focus your beam on one enemy. Roll with plus three. Afterwards, your gun overheats, and you can't use it until you pull it down. Um, okay. I look to mate, and I'm like, robot, hit the deck. <laughs> okay. 
So go ahead and I never added that to your character sheet, did I? I did. I added it. You did. How very proactive of you. Go ahead and uh, make a roll. Ooh. <laughs> Defend. This guy is only going to have a plus two dramatics. Enter. Hell yes. Damn. Uh, okay. Well, you did hit. Um, and it only has... Uh, it only has... It has way more elemental defense than most things, um, because it has this cool, like, um, chitin that, that helps it with homeostasis, but, um, not quite enough. So it's going to have, uh, plus three defense, uh, and then you had plus three on top of yours. So you had, um... Uh, can I use the Slayer aspect, or is it only with melee? I don't know. I, I would. I wrote look. the whole thing in your character sheet. So check stunts in your character sheet. Yeah. Let me check. Each time I hit a target with a weapon bearing the huge aspect, this has a huge aspect. But I fail to force mm -hmm. my foe to suffer a consequence. I can pay a fate point to automatically add three to the amount okay. of stress. Well, um, I will give you. Um, I will give you a choice. You have currently done, um, well, that doesn't sound right. 14 plus 9 is 23. Minus 13 is 10. Plus 3? Oh, sorry, sorry. So that should be minus 16. Um, 23 minus 16 is 7? 7. You did seven shifts of damage, which is a substantial amount. Um, yeah, wow. That's enough that you could um, you could give it a pretty serious consequence, uh, or you could just put all of those. Hmm. Would I be able to up it to ten? If it was all, if it was all uh, damage, but I think that this thing is going to opt to take a consequence instead of taking most of that damage. So it's going to take um, one point of uh, stress damage and a, uh, a moderate consequence, which is a minus six. So um, uh, what what consequence did it get? Uh, it's going to have to do with, with heat. Um, do you think it has a, like, um, I think I think one of its, it's like, four legs is uh horribly burned yeah and That's like right. the the area around it is like boiling blistering okay it has the horribly burned four leg uh consequence aspect so um who wants to go next Blovin wants to go what you doing Blovin? Uh, I got two different possible things. I guess I'll spend one turn and then we'll see how the fight goes for the next turn. So thing one is that I'm going to turn to mate because this has been scary, right? That was frequently referenced, right? <laughs> and I'd like to use my inspire <laughs> ability towards mate. So the mate, only problem is say, because mate is a robot. Soul. What? Ah! Yeah, I think it's Mates cool a robot, that I appreciate yeah, it, but, but I'm a stress, robot. Right? <laughs> yep. Robots I don't think that matters. You still directly with um, special abilities. With psionic abilities. I don't think this is... This is not a uh, psionic ability. I don't oh, know. which one is it? Inspire? Uh, hold on. You me... use your empathic powers to help an ally de deal with... Yeah, your empathic state. powers are psionic. Mm. Well, because you you're okay. So the question is, does mate have emotions? Because this helps with difficult emotions. Um. So are you willing to to go out so far to let to say that mate does not have emotions? No, I. Um, Mikhail, are you agreeing that mate has emotions? Mate used to. I thought we talked about that the last uh, level up session. Oh yeah, remind me. Yeah, mate used to feel all that, but then a lot of that was locked away um, because I took the one of the aspects uh, dead inside. Right. <laughs> it was so 
So, okay. Uh, does so he's not really this? afraid. <laughs> does Bluffin yeah, know it this? has a lot less to do with being afraid. I don't think you you would know that. I, I've not shared a lot of the stuff that happened to me on the original planet with the group. Oh, for fuck's sake! Okay, well, Bluffin tries and <laughs> fails. No, no, I, I know. I want you to try because I'm actually interested. If would we you allow <laughs> a high roll to augment some of that, then Bren? I think and it, as long as Blovin is using his words in addition to his powers, then yes. Okay. So I'm all for it. I was about to do the... <laughs> okay, but what Blovin was going to say was, stand tall, friend. We have the advantage here because we are badasses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a legit roll, too. <laughs> that oh, is shit. a legit roll. Okay. Yeah, um, me, you're going to have an advantage. Um, you are inspired. Okay. Do you want to go next, then? I think you should go next. Yeah, could I? I didn't know if I would be able to. Um, Shit, you just went a second ago, Because I, I technically you? went. Is this yeah, I part of the, the first one? This turn. Okay. No, no. So so you have already gone this turn. So yeah, I'm going to look up from the floor and just, like, give Blovin the thumbs up. <laughs> you blew up the thing. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, um, Roy, why don't you go? So, uh, Roy has whipped and pulled uh, one of the smaller guys toward him and mm -hmm. looks over and sees what's going down with this gigantic baddie and mate uh, pretty close to it and decides that he needs to end things pretty quickly. So he pulls yeah. out the heavy machine pistol, points at the uh, thing's head region, if you can call mm -hmm. it that, and unleashes with all four barrels. Okay. Um, um, what do I need to click that? Let's see. Um, so for now, I'm going to, for your um, your extra barrels, I'm just mm -hmm. going to give you a plus. Let's see. What's your what's your normal stats? Um, it's normally a four. Uh, let me see what it, what it Are you looking is. for my shoot, my skills? No, I'm looking for your, your weapon rating, and I want to compare it against mates because um i think with that upgrade your gun should probably be on par with uh mate's hand cannon gotcha uh, inventory mate's weapon rating is deal six. okay yeah go ahead and give it a um a, a six weapon okay. rating. done so i can just roll that yeah all right Oh, I have to choose a melee attack skill. Uh, shoot, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, come on. <laughs> well, let's see what this guy gets. Um, so he's going to have a... Um, let's say it's the same. Armor bonus. Oh, I, I mistyped. Let's just say one shift of damage it negates. You do, in fact, hit. Um... You hit, you did plus six, it has, um, it negates one, so you did six shifts of damage, um, nice. and for six shifts of damage, um, I'm gonna say that this one is dead. Technically, all of these little guys are one enemy, that it's, it's a swarm enemy, mm -hmm. um, but the the consequence of your damage is that one member of the swarm has died. Um, That's okay. Very nice. Avalon has not gone. Anwar has not gone, and the swarm has not gone. Um, yeah, I think um, I think Anwar should go next. Um, Anwar is going to hop, skip, and jump over here. Um, he's going to attack, but actually I need to, uh, fill out his weapons first. So, um, uh, why don't we have, uh, Avalyn go while I fill this out? Okay. Um. Oof, I'm interested. How should I play this? Um, hmm. if I already have the moderate consequence of exhausted, 
Is that to say that at this point, using any of my warp abilities is probably just going to make that worse? Um, uh, not mechanically, no. There, you, I will not give you a worse consequence for using your warp abilities, but I might invoke that consequence against you. Okay. But technically, I could invoke that consequence against you, regardless of what you do. <laughs> <laughs> um, did we... I don't think I ever actually added the new stuff to my sheet as well, so... Yeah, I, I was bad and didn't didn't help people get that in place. Oh, do you uh, want to use your kickies? Yeah, I think I just want to use my kickies. I think I just, like... Seeing Anwar, like, prepare to jump into battle probably is, like, making me feel better about this. Like, it's like, oh, this feels nostalgic. I'm fighting with my friends. And she's just going to jump right into the fray with the rest of those three and, like, straight up go for some kung fu fighting. Okay, so, um, so she has the overambitious leg, um, thing, and I did not write down stats for it. Um. <laughs> oh, I forgot about the leg. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, um... I'm gonna I'm gonna just fill out that <laughs> weapon for you. She's like so, it man, but with her legs. Um let's give you a new weapon, kicking legs. Oh hey look, I did I did fill it out for you. Um description is going to be plus two at end of move. Koi, um Okay, yeah. So, um... So, uh, we will just make a note that, um, you have just moved. So, it, uh... It is going to have a two-point higher bonus. Um... But you're, you're running in there and, and electro-kicking it, right? Yep. Alright, dope. Um, go ahead and roll. It, it's in there. I'm just rolling kicking legs, right? Kicking legs. I love it. So good. <laughs> wow, lots of neck and neck rolls here. Um, <laughs> so you hit, you have five, uh, you have five shifts total and it negates one. So you did four shifts of damage. That's not quite enough to um, to kill one of them, but I will note that you have done um, a notable amount of, of damage to this. Uh, why did it not want to? Okay. Um, yeah, so you have hurt it. Um, and uh, you, did, you did real cool and rocket legged it in the face. Oh, I tell you what. <clears throat> if you want to invoke an aspect, that would probably finish it off. Uh, do I have any? Well, remember, you can use any aspects from your legs as well. I don't know if I wrote those down under your gear. Um, spring legged, and you're also going to have the rocket leg aspect. Is that what I called it? I uh, think it was. I called it the martial arts aspect. Um, could I could I invoke the aspect of like I still don't have full control of them so I went and thought I finished my attack and then it just did an extra kick and I was like oops <laughs> yeah no that's great um so over active legs I think is what we call it for that aspect so you're invoking over active legs go ahead and spend a fate point and um yeah you you finish this guy off. Um, okay, that is... Roy looks uh, at Avalon and says, Glorious morning, a small putrid bug pummel, including <laughs> the rockets. Roy, I think that was the first poem that actually made sense. You're making good progress, buddy. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, wow. let's go ahead and... Um, so, Anwar is just going to pull out a regular SMG, and he's going he's gonna to give it the, the old pew-pew. Um... Wow, that's 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 a lot of points. Uh, defend. Okay. Um, 
So that's uh, eight shifts of damage. It's supposed to only negate one, I typoed there. So um, eight minus one is seven. Yeah, that's gonna take out one more of them. Okay. Um, uh, that's the top of a new turn, I'm pretty sure. I think everyone has gone. So who wants to go next? Because otherwise the big scary thing is gonna go. Yeah, Which I think I'd like to go before the big next. scary thing. Okay, what do you want to do? Yeah, so thanks to Blovin's newfound inspiration in me and Ruta giving me like a pretty decent opening, I'd like to open up my smuggler's compartment because uh, I'm okay. going to say narratively, I got a small gift as a parting gift from Charlie uh, before our next mission. And okay. she gave me a grenade. <laughs> oh, wow a grenade in the cave system <laughs> yeah what could go wrong not a single thing not that i can think of for well, mate is my robot Roy looks at mx8 and just shakes his head but doesn't say anything <laughs> you know that i think i know where this is going and i'm delighted what happens yes that yep <laughs> i would i would like to run up to the shadow monster and shove the yeah. grenade into the open moon, uh, taking advantage of that it's consequence disgusting. for the burn space. Disgusting. I want to jump back, horrible monster. and I want to and I want to shoot the grenade. Okay, um, so I'm gonna give you a new weapon because um, I love this and I think it's uh, very appropriate for you. Um, new weapon is going to be uh, <laughs> grenades. Um, <laughs> <You're pretty. laughs> so good. yeah, that really is just the <laughs> uh, explosive, uh, deals damage to your target as normal. All other creatures in the zone, including yourself, if applicable, are also hit, but with a minus two version of the roll. Oh, um, god, accordingly. Um, or we can all just take seven. Uh, okay, so everyone else takes the roll, but minus two. Yep. Um, and uh, let's see, I don't think I ever wrote down stats for a grenade itself, but I did write down stats for a grenade launcher, which has an attack of four. So I'm going to call it mm -hmm. an attack of four, a range of one, and it is uh, explosive. Um, but because, because you're stuffing this inside of it, um, I think that the, the mechanical benefit of that is going to be that you're going to do two extra damage to it and to a further two less damage to everyone else. So um, you should have a new skill you can roll uh, or a new weapon you can roll for called uh, grenades. Um, it is an other type. Um, so go ahead and roll that, and then yourself as well as Ruda need to roll defense. Probably. Um, how should I roll that? As a melee or a or, um? Roll it as. Oh boy. Does that, that end up being a shoot? A, I can roll, roll it as a tough, right? No, no. Roll it as a hardware. What happened? Yo, that makes a lot of sense. I like that. He's stuffing a grenade inside of this thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got yeah, that. no, that grenade got stuffed. I, I stuffed the turkey. Gross. Um, I'm turkey not... That motherfucker. Let's see. Uh, this thing has two and uh, four. Um, so, uh, Ruda, you have successfully avoided it. Mate, can you roll... Oh, I have to roll tough. Uh, either tough or acrobatics. Um, this thing, it gets hit with, uh, two, Nice. Three. I'm very good at tumbling. I'm very small. <laughs> um, so you've hit this thing with four shifts, um, so far, and, um, you can up that if you're willing to spend some fate points and invoke some stuff. Hmm. Um, I will say, uh, I didn't write it down, but your grenade definitely has the um, the aspect, like, explosive and fragmentary. Um, 
so you're you're at four shifts so far. Uh, what do you want to do? Yeah, I definitely would like to add explosive. Okay. And I wonder, is there any way I could take advantage of the consequence that it yeah. that it had? I will allow that. Uh, actually, actually, you already invoked the consequence. Oh yeah, in order to you, shove it in. Uh, that's that's what gave those bonuses. So um, yeah, go ahead and invoke a explosive. You're gonna have to spend one of your fate points, but you actually got an extra. Yeah, fate I got an extra. So that evens out. So that gives you six points. So it is at minus seven, or it, it is at minus eight total um, physical stress right now. Mm -hmm. um, and that's going down rapidly. Uh, every who wants to go next? This feels like a good opportunity for me to do my other helpful thing. Uh, I have a question though. Thing? I have this ability called. Well, okay. So you when you said that Avalon has fatigue, is that a yeah. medical or a mental stress, or is it both? Let's call it mental. Okay, that works. Um, Although it's a little bit harder to, <laughs> I, I have multiple um, things. Some of them apply to medical, some apply to mental, but I, I guess I, I can cover the full spectrum. As either. What I'd like to kind of do narratively, which is a little bit different than the actual um, ability, is to basically give Avalon an adrenaline boost, okay. which is one of the skills that I have called adrenaline boost. Uh, but that specifically just um, reduces one's stress down, physical stress down to zero. Um, but basically, I'm I'm trying to get Avalyn uh, to do the master therapist thing to reduce the level of her consequence. Would you feel that that's fair according to the narrative description yeah, of the fits, other that building? Fits narratively. There? Um, do you does it say if you need to spend a fate point to do that? I can do it once per scene, and then beyond that would be a fate point. And I roll for... Anything. Um, I think right now, just given everything that's going on, I'm not going to make you roll for it. Um, Avalyn, okay. uh, reduce your moderate exhausted consequence down to a mild tired consequence. Will um, do. Thank you, brothers. Nice. Yep. And the other thing um, that I do is uh, to move close in order to actually be able to do that. So yep. I'm moving into the other zone. Now, um, I like to imagine that there's all this, like, shooting and laser whips going on and literal explosions going off in the other room. And I like to imagine um, Lovin just kind of uh, fishy sauntering over and pulling out a needle <laughs> and being like, small print. <laughs> <laughs> and then he gives her a band-aid and a lollipop <laughs> yes that's perfect that's what happens okay um mm -hmm. who's going next <laughs> avalyn do you want to go next since oh, you're all how did, up on adrenaline how did that um how did that i'm sorry I, I wanted to see how that attack that mate uh pulled off against the the big bad what what happened with that like yeah it did a lot of damage um i'm gonna say it uh, I, I didn't apply a consequence because um, because I took applied it all as damage instead, but it is up to minus eight damage. So we can say that that blew off one of its four forearms um, and has significantly mangled its chest. It's it, it injured, but it also is moving much more than you would expect an animal to move when it's this injured. So okay. you don't know <laughs> what that means. I, want to um, kick it. I wanted to go if nobody else wanted to go next. Um, well, I think it makes more sense for Avalyn to go just because she just got oh, an okay. adrenaline shot. Um, but then yeah. we'll have to go after her. Okay. Do it. Um, I just want to confirm because I don't want to be all cheaty with the zones. I technically don't have to deal with the movement penalty because I can just warp around, right? Let me check your character sheet. Um, I either wrote that it takes a standard action or a move action to warp, and that is going to be the answer to your question. Uh, okay. You can teleport yourself 
or a willing creature to an uh, uh, to a destination you can see, and I did not say what kind of action it takes, I will allow that you can do that as a move action. So, okay. Yeah, you, can just, you can just warp over to a place you can see. Um, unfortunately, you, you actually can't see into the room that like Nate and Ruda are in currently. But you could just walk over there. Yeah, I think I'm going to... Like, she walks out a bit so she can see into that room, and then she's just going to warp right in to it and just kick him in the chest because it's all blown up. <laughs> yeah. Um, we didn't give you a, a special ability that happens if you, like, warp and attack, did we? Because I think there is one. I don't think one. so. There, there is one, but I don't think I picked it up. Okay, yeah. Like, there, so there's, just, like, another the one. That lets you see better in the warp. Um, or do more cool shit in the warp. Okay, yeah. so why don't you, um, go ahead and just, uh, weapon that shit. Are my kicking legs. Ha! Kicking legs. Two and uh, four. Um, okay, so you have done a total of two points of damage, um, two shifts of damage, but you can get that up with some aspects if you want. He still has the um, the mangled arm aspect. It's just you don't get a free invoke on it anymore. Um, and uh, you can use any that you have. Is his, is his like mangled arm in reach? Like when I go for the attack, it's a good question. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially because you're teleporting, you can just teleport next to it. Since I teleported in, can we say narratively that I grabbed that mangled arm as I went to kick? So as I kicked him, I just ripped it off because of the force. So, we had already established that the explosion ripped off uh, his, air quotes, mangled arm. It just didn't get rid of the consequence. Oh, right. But here's how I'm going to justify that. It blew off one arm and mangled the arm next to it, and you just kicked off the arm next to it. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Um, that's great. Okay. Um, Can a mill go next? Hell yeah. All right. Um... I'm just going to do something like, I'm going to like, oh gosh, my glasses are all foggy. Um, I want to like load uh, a round into like the revolver chamber. Uh -huh. um, and I want to just be real cool about it. Uh, I load the round into the like. Hey, um, let me go ahead and tell you, because uh, this is going to change which barrel you use. You have noticed that it was more injured by Ruda's um, heat weapon than it was by the physical attack. Oh, uh, okay. Then I load a plasma round into the plasma barrel, mm -hmm. and I am just going to like, uh, like, hmm, how to do this cool like mm -hmm. uh, behind the back. Yeah, I'm gonna go. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, not behind the back, but you gave me an idea. I'm going to like uh, under the legs, <laughs> under mate's legs. <laughs> no, I'm just gonna shoot. I'm gonna shoot, and I'm gonna uh, yeah. I'm just gonna shoot it in the face. Okay. Um. Give me a second. Okay. <laughs> um. Copy image, and I'm gonna go to. Uh, I'm so as not to get it mixed in with all the memes, the sick memes. I'm gonna post this in the art tab. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. There's so many. Memes. There's so sorry. Many memes. Sorry. 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 And, um... This is, like, the memes is honestly half of what I think. Yeah, it's the, this it's the best part. So, oh, yeah. Memes. Holy crap. Oh, yeah. Wow, that's okay. legit five, five, scary. He's looking like the dead space. Okay, so the first one that I posted is a decent approximation of what you should be thinking for the um, autoimmune night. Um, and it's, like, fucking big. Um, the second one that I posted is what you should be thinking for the, like, neurological drone. Mm. Um... I don't okay. know which one is scarier. <laughs> I mean, yeah, both look like Necromorphs, and it sucks. 
The neurological drones are actually like relatively small. I'd say they're only like um, four foot five or maybe five feet tall. They're not nearly as intimidating because the other thing is fucking huge. Um, but they are like unsettling to look at. Um, okay, so uh, I blast it with a fifth. I blast it with a thirteen. Okay. Um, hey, can you check out? Can you look up what your uh, weapon stats are for me in yeah. a second? So this has a two acrobatics and a fuck. What did I say? I think I said a, a two uh, elemental armor. Yeah. You hit. I'm looking up the weapon. Oh god, this thing is so slow. <laughs> Military marine mount. Did somebody put a laser on a dolphin? Yep. <laughs> the U.S. military. God damn U.S. military. <laughs> I mean, the Russians did it first, but yeah. <laughs> okay, so it is Roll. It is a plus five. No, I just needed to see. Yeah, so plus it is five. a plus five elemental I damage. I love dolphin pose. Uh, <laughs> like, hey, fuck boy. I'm about to blast your head off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you did, uh, you did four shift and... Um, I'm going to say that it is on the verge of death. Um, and I, uh, I'm looking, where are all my aspects? Um, go up to, it's in the aspects section. Down a little. There. Ah, wait. Expand it. Where? Aspects in the middle of your Oh, screen. I see, yeah. I'm just seeing if I can invoke anything. I have eight points I can get. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. Um. I probably not. Well, go ahead and let me look at your weapons. Um. Yeah. Oh, no, no. Hold on. You've got a laser weapon, yeah. which means that you can use those same aspects that um, I had sent to uh ruda a second ago which um i'm pretty sure i know that that you can take a you can take a plus three bonus um uh beam you can take a overheat you take a plus three bonus but you need to vent your weapon the next turn that's um, fine because i'll just if if it gets to the next turn i'll just load a i'll just load one in the opposite barrel yeah um so uh Minus three. Okay. So I'm going to say that that is enough to do it. Um, oh, yeah. Can I describe the kill? Go for it. All right. Um, nice. So uh, Avalon kicks off an arm, right? Yeah. And Mate just blew off another arm. The arm goes, like, flying and is kind of, like, whipping around, mm -hmm. right? Um, I, I'm going to take, like, dead aim and, like shoot it and like the camera just zooms in on the laser like rounds mm -hmm. and the laser round like goes through the fingers that of the severed hand it's very, it's very good it's very good it's very just like pops him like right between the eyes it's, it's like the the opening to deadpool yeah okay fantastic um all right can i go now <laughs> like, oh yeah there is one dude left sorry i thought that was the end yeah, <laughs> yeah we we'll killed everyone sure fuck him up um, first blood, last blood. Uh, Roy <laughs> has divine light object. Oh, I'm sorry, not divine light object. Hard light object at the uh, okay. last one here, but reverses it and just uses it to crush him. That's great. Um, and just we need, uh, we need to get you a um, we need to get you a focus at some point so you can add weapon damage bonuses to that. Um, go ahead and roll. Let's see. Uh, I think I said resolve when you're using it that way. Um, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, it's a stunt, so, I mean, yep. I got go ahead resolve. And roll, roll resolve. Where is resolve? There it is. Wait. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, that's a legit roll. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Bad guys have not been rolling well at all today. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you you killed him. Um. Okay. So. So. Uh. That one is dead. They're all dead. You guys have caused a lot of commotion, and um. 
you don't know what exactly is happening. Um, I will say, um, you hear Anwar say, uh, hey guys, I think we might have a problem here. Um, and uh, simultaneously, you get a um, you get you get a call from let's say it's from Liko because I like Liko. Uh, you get a call from Liko, and she's like, "Hey, we heard a lot of gunfire. You all right?" We're fine. I don't know about all of these biologicals around us, though. <laughs> um. Okay. Um. How are you guys going to respond to uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, um, Anwar's uh, comment? What's the problem? Uh, lots, lots of, lots of big scary bugs. We need to move quickly from this place. Um. Uh, so, does anybody want to go down there and uh, check it out? Yeah, yeah Rudick and let's all go together. Be at the front. Down where? Down here? Yeah, we're yep. going south or are we going to the the west? I'm gonna release he's, some. He's drones. he's referring to it to the south. Why don't I okay. release Yeah, you have those you have those combat drones, right? Yeah, I'm gonna release some combat drones to go out ahead and like send us back schematics of the well, uh, area before we get get to it. Okay. Rudick has a cyber pup. He doesn't know how to use it, but if the cyber pup could be programmed to like scout, then other people could like use the cyber pup. Also, I'm gonna ask Blovin. Uh, hey, Blovin. Yep. Do you want to review some of that data that we collected during the battle? I'm hoping to like, cause I'm, I'm like, ideally, it would be really cool if we like tap into the like police scanner type deal. You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Get there. See if we can uh, figure out what their communications are like. Yeah, I'm I'm on it. Okay. Um. Cool. Hmm. How do I want to do this? Oh, I know what I'm doing. Okay. Hold on. Uh, I need to grab this one. I'm not going to use this one just yet. Um, and I am going to reuse this one. Um, paste. Come on. Escape. Uh, turn that off. And let's get... Uh... Okay. Um, so, um, I totally forgot that you have that sensor. Emil, that that says relative location and uh, what kind of creatures in that distance. So you actually can see on your sensor that there is a um, neurological barren, or not barren. Sorry, barrens are the second highest. No, yeah, that's what I meant. A neurological barren to the uh, south. And um, it is accompanied by a neurological knight and uh, three drones, and you're going to see them in just a second. Um, click, click, click. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, this thing takes so long. I should get hey, across it at some point. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, are we thinking that a neurological. Uh, you cut off. We're looking for, or is that something totally different? What? Are we thinking that a neurological baron is the equivalent to the communication bug that we're looking for, or is that totally different? No, it's it's the same thing. So a neurological wow. baron serves the function of the the neurology, uh, the the neurological. Right. Is it called the neurological system? Is that the word that I'm looking for? in, in the, the human system? body, it sends messages. Um, Central and, nervous system? Sure. So, so the, um, the, and barren means that it controls at a regional level. So something like the size of a state. So this thing is directing communications for the surrounding 
area. Um, I'd like to imagine that if we were to pan over to the wombats right now, they just simply had to like go into like a comm system and just flip a switch. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I'm, yeah, I'm sure. I'm gonna go ahead and say just any time you guys have to make a decision, uh, the wombats always got the easy one. Um. Okay. So, um, I think Anwar has backed off until the party is, uh, coordinated and ready to, like, uh, do something with him. Um, in the meantime, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop in, uh, one of, uh, Kevin's little drones here. Um, let's, uh, make him real small. Real small. Can and I ask? we're going to flip. Can I ask what that uh, little pathway is to the oh, relative? So that's actually the same thing as the the door that you cut through earlier. It's um there was a doorway there and it is covered in meat stuff. Um mm -hmm. a thing to note, which I haven't really had time to go over because crazy fighting and stuff was happening. Um you are currently inside of an alefin building, which is also a cave. And the nature of Aelfin architecture is that there is no distinction between um, what is nature and what is, air quotes, man-made. So, um, so this is a cave. This cave also has rooms with doors and, uh, and stuff like that. But all of them look as if they just naturally occurred that way. It, it looks as if... Uh, you had just like walked into a cave in the woods and this cave in the woods just happened to have like bedrooms and a janitor's closet and stuff in it. But those, like the walls of that stuff is just cave wall. Um, so that's kind of what you're looking at. And you can see that there are lines of um, things that would be like lights running along the, the top edges and um, you can see there's other, like, what should be, like, machinery, but a lot of it has been fucked up by the Zenotians, yeah. so it's it's unusable right now. Um, um, Anwar is pulling back. Uh, you guys can use that, that drone to scope it out. I think that these things obviously at this point know that you're coming, but um, they have... Uh, no, you know what? Let's, we've already established that these things like being sneaky little fuckers. Uh, I'm gonna say that um, they they are hiding like so, and because uh, Kevin sent in his drone, he's able to get a good a good look at where they're all at um, before you guys have to do anything. But um, yeah, so so you've got several different um, Zenotian doodads in here. Um, what would this look like? Now, let's see if we can do darker. Uh, that's pretty good. Yeah, now he looks more thematically consistent with the others. Um, okay. What do you guys want to do? Rita's just going to I mean, we can see them, right? At this point? Well, uh, yeah. Yeah, sure. So I, I feel like Root is just going to charge at the thing and hit it with the flamethrower. Oh. Yeah, if you want, you have that flamethrower that lets you hit multiple things um, at the same time. Uh, I do need to draw out more zone lines since uh, you guys have found a new zone. Let me go ahead and... Map layer, um... Didn't know, but my sniper rifle is, can shoot seven layers away. <laughs> yeah, your sniper rifle has essentially infinite range. Like, the, the amount away that it can hit is, like... I'll have to scroll for a little while to get to a point where I could, like, not hit it. Right, um, and since a lot of your fights have been happening indoors, it's, uh, unlikely that you would come across that kind of situation anytime soon. Um, so I have arbitrary- this is a very large room, 
So I've kind of arbitrarily split this room up into the center of the room and then the four sides of the room as five different zones because this room is way too big to consider one zone. Mm -hmm. um, do we all agree that that kind of is a, a way of splitting it up that sort of makes sense? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yep. Where's, where's the um, I'm Okay. Move maybe here. So, um, Ruda, did you want to kick it off by just poking your head around the corner and flamethrowing this whole area? Yeah, yeah, I'm just going to go all out all right, on the dope. front line. Um, let me, let me look Burn at what I said about flamethrower. Um, can reach targets, can be used to place, uh, da, 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 suppressing fire, beam sweep. You can hold down the trigger as you sweep your beam across an area, attempting to hit multiple enemies. Roll as normal for the first enemy with a minus one enemy, with a minus one modifier for the second enemy, a minus two modifier for the third enemy, and so on. Um, and then there's a second part where we roll to see if your gun has overheated. But right now there's two enemies, so roll as normal for the first one, roll minus one for the second one. Oh, did did you just roll? Yeah, I did. Okay. Um, first one is going to be against the knight, which is this big scary motherfucker, and um it clearly did not um did not hit. I mean, hold on, I, I gotta roll defense. I'll go ahead and do the thing. Three, two. There's no one. way. There's no fucking way it'll. Two. Okay, never you never say thing. there's no way. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So the first one missed and actually, um, oh, okay. oh, you're not in the same zone as it. So, oh, hold on. Do I wanna commit to that? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, so this is, we'll deal with the second one in a second. Um, short, you know what? I'm not even going to uh, do stats for the second one. You had a plus 10 before calculating for bonuses. I think you had a plus 15 total. You eviscerated this little buddy. He, I, you know what? It is not only that he, um, that he has been killed. I think he has been reduced to ash. So oh, instead of giving <laughs> the, usual, uh, the usual red X, I have made him gray. He is, <laughs> you, know, you know when Marvin the Martian shoots somebody with his little ray gun and then they just turn yep. into a, a person-shaped pile of dust? Yeah. That's what just happened to this dude. Oh, um, <laughs> Yeah. Um, and I actually, as a because you rolled so high, you can get an an extra effect. Would you like to say that this zone is on fire? Yeah. Okay. Um. Uh. I'm going to go ahead and freehand. Uh. Orange map. Let's just get a nice sloppy on fire zone there. Yeah. You like that? That is a flaming, Shit. flaming room that now every person has to walk through to get into the encounter. <laughs> no, that's um, cool, Ruda. You're just making it look real nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah he's, giving, he's giving you a nice ambient lighting. Um, before we figure out defense for the um, for the night, um, and counterattacks and stuff, we need to see if your weapon overheated. So, um. Okay. So now make another firearms test. Don't roll weapon, just literally just roll the, the shoot skill. Um, and you're looking for eight plus eight plus two. You need to beat a 10 or else your gun overheats. All right. Hey, look, you rolled an 11. Very close. Um, your gun is, is a little hot, but it did not overheat. So you'll be able to keep using it. Rita <laughs> just blows on it. Yeah. Um, Okay, um, now, because it beat your your attack by so much, I think that uh, you spray this fire against the ground and the drone is just completely eviscerated. I think this thing oh, uh, launches into the air and is now airborne and has gone into the next zone over, so it's not sitting directly on top of thing, the flames. Mm. 
Because as anybody who knows physics will tell you, flames standing hurt. above flames is not significantly better than standing in them. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so he's, he, has, he has moved away a bit, and he's actually going to counter ranged attack against you. And um, what he does is, uh, as I'm sure you have seen in any number of, of good like sci-fi uh, games where the alien like pulls its head back and then like vomit sprays at you. <clears throat> oh, it yeah. does that, except uh, whether you know this or not, the vomit spray is actually going to be a number of like fungus-like spores that are going to be a nerve agent attaching your body. Oh, fuck. Um, it's a neurological night, my dude. Oh, I'm so happy that I don't have organics. Shit. Yeah. Um, so, let's go ahead and have it attack. It's in, there. it's in the camouflage pants. Um, it's going to have a plus three attack bonus and a plus three uh, weapon bonus, but its damage is going to be... Um, its damage is going to be neurological, so you um, are not going to be able to apply any armor bonuses to it. Um, okay, you need to roll tough or resolve against this. Okay, well, yeah, okay. You uh, significantly manage to uh, resist the effects of these spores. Um, but yeah, that was a that was a pretty intense back and forth to start the fight off with. Um, uh, we are going on five o'clock. This has taken longer than I expected. Um, yeah, I think we should okay. wrap it up and finish up this battle next time. Yeah, so I'm thinking that there's I don't think there's a good way that I can do this fight justice and also get it done before people get tired and you know have to have to take a break so i'm gonna go ahead and um i'm gonna go ahead and call it here okay we will wrap up the fight next time is everybody all right with that that's yeah, cool with me yeah yeah i'm fine with that um I leave the room burning thanks ruta <laughs> yeah well, remember, there's a second. There's a second way to get in. You guys would just have to find a way to get through that meat mesh, which took you two minutes last time. So that might be complicated. Um. Uh. Yeah. So I'll. I'll be honest. I downloaded Dragon Quest Eleven last night, and um. I'll be real, guys. I need to go. I need to go save whatever the dragon Quest <laughs> is. I don't know. Hey man, that's, only that's cool. It for about two hours. No, that is a that is a very honest thing. That Video you need games to do. are very very important right now. <laughs> I I was so after church today. I was um, our our church has finally started doing a the the old people at my church have finally figured out how zoom works basically oh god um and uh we finally started doing the like after church coffee break thing um but over zoom and so i was uh i was talking with all the all the cool church people after church and we were having a good time and, and talking about our pets and stuff and then after like 20 minutes i was like cool cool well, this is cool, guys, but I downloaded a video game last night and have got, not gotten to play it yet, so <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> Hail Jesus and all that. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, guys, this was a good game. I liked this. Uh, this was more fighting than I usually do, and I feel like I'm still getting a lot of the um, info dumping type stuff uh, done. That is um, that is not usually my preferred uh, part of DMing, but I feel like now that you're starting to get a sense for what the environment looks like, what the kinds of enemies are, um, from here on in the level, I'll be able to let you guys do more of the talking. Um, how are we all feeling? We like this game. Yeah, this yeah. Was fun. It was really fun. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> nice. Uh, the, they were fun fights. I, I. So, so this is... They, they go quick, but they're scary, especially with the sprites being... <laughs> right. The way they are. So we're we're finally getting far enough into Fate that I think that you guys are getting a feel for it. 
What yeah. do you guys think about the... Um, I had a pretty narrative uh, combat style for D&D as well, but what do you guys think about the fighting in Fate versus the fighting in D&D? I like it. I, I think it's a different touch. Yeah. It's not It's not completely different. There's. You're still rolling attack and rolling defense and yeah. moving and all that stuff. But in different ways, it like affects it differently. Yeah, yeah. and I think that it, it feels like you're making more narrative decisions than dice roll decisions. Yeah. Um, like, when you guys want to give a benefit to somebody else, it's not, I cast blank, it's like, hey, I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm going to distract this enemy so, uh, Emil can get a good shot at it later. Um, so, that was cool. This was a great game, everyone. Yeah, that was dope. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, very fun. Indeed. That was awesome. Bye, everyone. Many thanks, y'all. Have a great Have a weekend. Show. See you later. Bye, all. See you next Bye. week. Bye. Bye.